Oh, here we go. Suriku! <laughs> yeah, this canary. The canary right here in stream. This lost baby canary. Is, um... The one. Who made the cards. Magically, in like a day. All of them. It was like a... I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay, alright, okay, okay. So, Soriku, I'm gonna to to you. This is my this is my TED talk. Um, <laughs> uh, my TED talk about uh, Soriku Endgame. Actually, uh, this it's kind of funny because I've honest to God. I guess this will suffice as my video kind of. I've wanted to, and this was like, you know, four K H three, and everything that I really really wanted to. Uh, make um a video about romance and like talking about soriku and just generally how romance is handled in media um because i mean the whole thing will go up on twitch so you can you can watch this but uh romance in media and how poorly it's handled and just Suriku and what I had coined as the uh, traditional test. Um, that if you take something that are, say, two characters or whatever, anything of, you know, say it's a same sex couple, of the same gendered couple, like, <clears throat> um, anything that would be gay. And if any, either, if them, if one of, if it was just like, now it's a, a cis het normal ass relationship. Uh, and then suddenly it's like, it seems, uh, like a legitimate, like, pairing or, like, possibility. It's like, okay, look, if you can turn, like, if it's like two dudes, one of them's a girl, and, or two dudes, and you turn one of them into a lady suddenly, and oh, oh my gosh, now it seems so much more legitimate. It was probably gay to begin with. If it seems romantic in this other context, it's just because you're having trouble seeing any kind of gay relationship to begin with. <laughs> uh, so I call that the traditional test because, you know, we need a traditional household and a traditional family with, you know, a so, um, it's just stupid. If you turn it straight and it suddenly works, uh, well, it was gay to begin with, so. It's that- it, that's it. That's all there is to it. Um. <laughs> just fucking Lion King just playing. <laughs> um, but I was just gonna talk about that. And, um, generally just how- Because I've had to talk about this with- um, a guy friend of mine before, um, actually, um, because I know, because I know Kelsey is listening, it was me talking to Joe, he's a friend of ours, and it wasn't even bad, it was just that, you know, there, there was little, like, context of the series after so many years, and it's like, here's my straight dude friend, and I was just like, okay, let me tell you how Riku is just gay. Like, there's pretty much, like, not a doubt. This isn't just me, like, wanting this to be, or just, like, a take. It's, like, in terms of his own character motivation and everything he has done, Riku is gay. <laughs> and after I just told him about everything, just stuff that happens, he was like, ah, yeah, okay, yeah, Riku's gay. <laughs> and how it's, like, core and vital, uh... Like, literally, when uh, people are confused about story direction, or why why are they doing this? Why are they focusing on this? Why aren't they focusing on these other characters? Aside from a fa the fact that, uh, word of God, uh, maybe not, like, not, like, word of God, no more a God, but, like, you know, co-creator been there. Hi, Gam. Um, co-creator has been there since the beginning, Shinji Hashimoto. Man in the elevator himself. Um, him stating that the series revolves around, uh, the series revolves around Sora, Riku, their relationship, and growing up. 
and that it will continue to be this moving forward. And this was in regards to Kingdom Hearts 3. So it's like, you can take that at least to heart <laughs> that it's not just, well, you know, this arc, this whatever, because obviously it wasn't super focused in Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, yeah, it's important to take little naps. Don't feel bad. Naps are important. Um, this is naughty bromance? Um, okay. So you can take you can take this, but you didn't really miss any gay content. I'll be real. You missed um uh me adding more to Vanitas being really dumb, and that's about it. That is literally it. Ah, here we go. The quote itself. <clears throat> Except for it got cut short. Uh the fact is that the main focus of the series is Sora and Riku. How their relationship develops and how they grow up. He says, after so many years, the player's personal growth is closely tied to the game's story at this point. So, that's the most important thing about the series, and what we want to put into the game. For Kingdom Hearts 3, players will be able to resurrect the happy memories they have from being teenagers and playing, and when playing Kingdom Hearts 3. And then the it gets cut off. You guys are in the chat, you can see. <laughs> um... But it's like, you have that as kind of a guarantee is what they want to do with it. Uh, and then with the secret movie, we know for sure, literally, that's what they're doing moving forward. Um, but it's not just like, obviously, it didn't just come out of nowhere. Uh, it's been solidly built through the series the whole time, consistently. It wasn't just like, and then we just kind of flipped a switch and shifted gears and just, you know, started to act like this was all Gucci, kind of, but just enough to get people interested, and then just backing off, which would, you know, land in the good old fun place of uh, queer baiting. But it's been there kind of since the beginning. I would say that Kingdom Hearts 1 is, quote, the straightest one, but even then, not fully, honestly. It's, it's, it's really not... <laughs> Um, yeah, there's also the relationships change. Um, I'll definitely get more to this stuff, but, like, it, background to bounce, fill these pauses as I try and move forward. Maybe I'll just feel... It's comp het, Scoob. It's what it is. Um, I guess I'll start... I know where to start. Okay, so for... For my own experience with Kingdom Hearts, obviously, I came in kind of... I came in kind of late, obviously. I started, like, last October around my birthday. Not last October, the October before. God, it's been 2017. Late 2017, basically 2018, was when I just kind of stepped into the new year and a whole new life, and Kingdom Hearts is all I know now. And now, and, and you know, everything the light touches will be yours. That was me walking in, and now it's all mine. <laughs> and I played, I played the Lion King. We've made this a reality. <laughs> We've come full circle, the circle of life. So, <laughs> um, um, we don't, we don't go, that's where the streets are. We don't go there, so. <laughs> um, So, okay, I came in late, right? Um, and generally before all of this as well, uh, I've never been, like, somebody who regularly, say, partook in fandom. I, honestly, I just barely existed as, like, a person. <laughs> like, I just played video games, and I just kind of 
kind of made it day by day, right? I just, I wasn't, I, my brain didn't work. And then it was like, your brain bad. Here's brain pills. And I was like, oh my god, wow. <laughs> and now I'm here. I'm a person now. Um, so I just didn't anything. It, and romance has never been like a huge interest for me. Uh, just in terms of media I consumed. It's always been fine, right? Um, but honestly, it, it, it's always been a matter of just convincing I've, I just need to be convinced. Like, uh, example, I love Final Fantasy X, and I love Phoenix and Yuna. I really do, because you, they take the whole game and explore a lot of, like, the world and, like, these characters and their relationships and everything within that world. I love Final Fantasy X. Um, <clears throat> and it's, all it really takes is just being convincing. That's it. Um, and even then, I wouldn't say I'm, like, so wild. I never really wildly went out of my way. Then comes Kingdom Hearts. And I played through the whole series in one big fell swoop, right? Well, it wasn't me. It was my roommate. And he really fucking blasted through that shit. <laughs> um. And I love it. Um, Okay. Which also it was good playing through with my roommate, uh, because he loves Soriku, he loves them, and he was just and he has good opinions. So it was like him just going like, "Yeah, look, just trust me. Like they're super gay. It's very super gay." And I was like, "Okay, all right. Oh yeah, I'll have to play that." Um. So playing through everything, and it was like. I could I could see it, right? I was just like, okay, I definitely, like, just my intaking the whole series in one go, I could definitely see this, and it just made sense, right? Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, guys that ship Soriku are, like, ultra-valid, and, like, Philo, my roommate, uh, was very much, like, to start, he was just like, it's Comphead, look at this, he's like, look, you're, you don't, you know, like, four people, <laughs> And it's just like you think you like you like you think you're supposed to like this girl, you know? And you're like, well, that's normal. And it's not like you don't like her, you know? But you just have no idea and no sense of scale as to like actual romantic feelings. So then later, when you're like smacked by with it, you know, you're just like, boom, holy shit! You're like, oh my god, this is what this feels like. Oh, oh what was I thinking? <laughs> And it's really just, I was like, that's a good take, but also I just, I, I see it, right? It, it's not just like, this is my headcanon. I was like, this is a valid reading of this story, you know? Um, I'm gonna go play that. And love it really quick. Hmm. I'll point it out when it gets there, but the uh, Dearly Beloved that plays on the PS4 Pro, the Kingdom Hearts version, you know, the big fancy Kingdom Hearts PS4, um, it's the same Dearly Beloved that plays when Kyrie's writing her letter, letter, little, her letter, and it's like so beautiful and wonderful and I love it, but like just as it kind of gets past, there's a part where it very distinctly has like specifically dream drop like dearly beloved bits in it and like only that <laughs> only dream drop and you'll, you'll hear it <laughs> i'll point it out um yeah, yeah yeah it's it's it'll go and i'll point it out and it's wonderful also this is just probably it's one of my favorite Dearly Beloveds, I believe. Because it, it's just... Ugh, ooh, it's so light. Damn! <sighs> okay, anyway. Um, so, basically, to summarize uh, my experience, was I went through Kingdom Hearts with, like, okay, sure, yeah, I was told, yeah, they're definitely super gay. <laughs> but I was just like, I'm just gonna experience this series and see what's up. And then I went through it once... And then I went through it twice over Christmas <laughs> a second time. And it, like, really everything, like, started to sink the fuck in. 
Um, and, uh, sorry, I keep reading the chat and I get distracted, but it started to sink in. And again, like I said, did never really shift anything. And I was just like, damn, um, this just like, in terms of character motivations, uh, what most of everything that happens in the games revolves around only makes sense if it's following this route, right? Um, and I'm just not really... I don't like to sit around and say... For example, uh, Kyrie, right? Uh, her character, lacking. Um... And while I definitely, like, there's nothing wrong with, you know, uh, say, working with her and kind of making, like, like fan interpretation character, like, you know, well, if Nomura's not going to do it, then I will, kind of a thing. I really don't want to sit around, this is just me personally, I just don't, I just don't care to, to, to spend my time doing so, I guess. <laughs> it sounds really harsh. I'm not trying to be... It's just like, oh, I'm not here to do their job for them. If you want me to like the character, just write them. You know, just convince me. That's all I'm asking. And I was waiting for Kingdom Hearts 3 to do exactly that. And they were saying all of the right things leading up to it that I was just like, this can convince me to like Kyrie, Like, actively. Not just, like, be passive towards. Um... And that's just generally, I just like, I just, I really usually often like canon material of whatever media I'm consuming. Uh, not to say that like AU stuff is bad or anything. It's just like, I've rarely been invested in anything enough to want to explore past that. Um, and so, like, I, I, I say this only to, like, try to put it into scale how much I personally was genuinely convinced that, like, just about their relationship, Sora and Riku's, their importance to the story, and how it is. it was so much that, like, I've literally never been invested in something like Kingdom Hearts in my life. Like I am now. Like, I, I've, I've never partaken in fandom, like I said, I've never done any of this other anything. Uh, I started drawing again, you know, because Kingdom Hearts just <laughs> grabbed me by the balls, <laughs> pulled me in. <laughs> uh, that and my brain started working at the same time. So, you know, I'll chalk it up to both sides here a little bit, but you know, I've it's been like a year, over a year now of just straight Kingdom Hearts the whole time. I don't think it's changing anytime soon. I'm, I'm not unhappy about it, but um, it, it just, it really was, like, baffling to me. Oh, wait, here's the little, you know, you know, there it goes. And the specific dream drop only, that addition, that little bit. Um, okay. Yeah, no, I also, like, I mean, it's a fan arting thing, and it's like me just art in general. <laughs> it's just nowhere for me, and then, boom, this. Um, and also, like I had said before, uh, or I've, I've said, I've told this story before of, like, when basically, uh, the seed, like, there was a seed planted about, with, like, with Soriku, and just having gone through with my friends, having gone through with my buddy Vana and stuff, and just really taking in, like, god damn, this is just story pertinent. It is entirely, like, thoroughly through the whole thing, and seeing it a second time, so everything really is fucking get, getting in there, I was like, oh shit, this isn't fucking around, though. <laughs> it really isn't. Um... And 
I think part of that is because, uh, like, so I came in and I come waddling into the fandom, you know, just like, oh man, what's going on? Hey guys, <laughs> woohoo, you need my little baby diaper, it changed me. <laughs> and nobody, I, I changed myself. I'm king of Piss Mountain, it's me. Um, so, <laughs> just, just, okay, like I said, seed planted, and it was like we sent Vana home. We were coming back from the uh, airport, um, and it was this moment where I was sitting with, uh, I was sitting with my buddy Nami, and there was like I was just thinking about the fun fact that dearly beloved is you know it follows a heartbeat, which I was just like, God, that's such a neat detail, and like just hearing it, and like I just I felt. I felt the bloom of the flat. The seed was there and the plant. And I was like, holy shit. Like, I just was like, oh my god. And just Tanami, I was like, Sora and Riku are, s are so in love. And, <laughs> and Nami was like, yeah. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're right. You absolutely were. And then I was just like, I just can't stop fucking thinking about it. Just, what the fuck? Like, it just, it hit me all at once how just told as a story it's like the only thing that makes sense <laughs> um so here's now <laughs> so you had any sense of scale the rundown uh didn't partake in fandom did not really ship anything ever actively and i was never in anything long enough to go for it right to do anything to pursue anything um and then it suddenly just hit me like a shit ton of bricks. Like, just a bunch. Just dropped from the sky. <laughs> it was not only like, I really like them. It's a good time. I enjoy Kingdom Hearts. It was kind of one part, like, I enjoy them a whole bunch. But it was like, the reality hitting me of, holy shit. Like, this story is, this is just what the story is telling. Like, it's just, here it is. And, and that's... And, and <laughs> the reality is what clamped onto my soul. Um, and so I'm gonna tell you why I, honest to God, okay, I take your little hands, I, t I take, and, I, and I'll give you all of the reasons that you could feel this way, okay? I'm here to tell you all about it. I take your little hands very gently. My hands are very warm. This is just a fun fact. Very, very warm. Uh, so warm that one time I held a tarantula and um, it didn't want to leave my hand because my hands were so warm. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it was, it was very, that to be like, a, it was like, oh no, spooky. It was, a, it was like, a, we were at a bug, a butterfly exhibit place. And it was like, you can hold the tarantula. And I was like, okay, cool. And so I sit down and I put it on. And it's like, usually she would like get on and then crawl right off. And then I sat down and then it was just like. <laughs> and uh, then just stayed there. The guy was like, uh, <clears throat> come on, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um. And then another fun fact, animals just love me. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> All the time. Uh, I'm getting slightly distracted. Just a little bit. But at the fair. Uh, we went to the petting zoo, and this goat walked up to me, and then just pushed its head into my leg, and then wouldn't leave me. And so then I just kind of was crouched there, petting one goat for a very long time. A baby cat does not rule over me, and I anybody who knows and has been around me and baby cat, they know. <laughs> I'm the only one he even listens to, but okay. Um... I take I take all of your little hands in my nice warm mitts, if you will, and I tell you that very genuinely from the bottom of my heart, I have really little to no doubt the direction that this series is going. I feel <laughs> like I feel quite confident is the thing, and <laughs> um, I feel really confident, and here's the thing, is like, I really just, 
I would say like 98. Like there's, I just, it's literally the smallest room for error. But I will give you all of the reasons why it's okay to hope. Okay? Um. Though I absolutely understand. Never like feel bad like you're like working against the possibility by thinking you know well i i don't i don't want to get my hopes up i don't want to get hurt by it you know and like invest all of this emotion and stuff into it and and feel as if you know you're working against people who are hoping for it i can't blame anybody because there's literally never been anything like this um There's there's little other examples, basically. Like, the, the only other thing I can really think of where it was like... I'm still... I'm absolutely still holding your hands. I'm sitting here, and, and I'm just... I take your little... take your little hands in mine. <laughs> um... Yeah, you can take your hands away. It's okay. Um, so... I... <laughs> as a general rule of thumb for my for myself. Like, I'll give you all of the reasons and just literally just the story. Um, but like... Like I had said earlier, uh, I don't like to have to do the work. I just want to be convinced. Um... And I have been quite thoroughly convinced um <laughs> and seeing it all in once all at once like i did versus people who have been playing it for years i think has given me a slightly different perspective of the of the overall and the whole of the direction uh not saying it's it's strictly better i just am sitting in a slightly different position um But I, I don't like to blindly bet. I usually don't even <laughs> bet or and or like gamble too much on like just whatever, even just metaphorical of on whatever the fuck, right? Yeah, the fucking Square Enix Cafe. Hmm. Ugh. Uh, drink water if you haven't. I really needed a drink. But, um, anyway, please, when I say I have been very thoroughly convinced that, like, I wouldn't say that it's, like, not easy to do so, but I just, I wouldn't be pushing it if I genuinely didn't think so. That's all. Um, because there's really no use in blindly, you know... Oh, well, guys, don't worry. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. But I'm just sitting here, and I'm like, uh, two plus two equals four, bitch. I don't know. This just seems to be where it's fucking going. I, I couldn't- t I literally, like, I'm open to being wrong, but nothing is showing me otherwise. It's only going one place. I'm seeing the end of the road down there. It's like we're all walking down this big, fat, fucking, big old, open, old town road, bitch, riding on our tractors. And it, it's just, it's just a straight shot. <laughs> um, so, I went into Kingdom Hearts 3 literally expecting, at best, a neutral ending in terms of relationships. Like, I was expecting that they wouldn't, like, was just the direction that they pushed Sora and Riku, but I was like, okay... If they're going to try and wrap anything up, um, they might not, you know, go with Riku, even though they definitely could, and we're in a new day and age. Uh, there's a lot that's been going into this, you know, this was planned to be out much earlier, when this kind of wouldn't have been so much of an option. So I'm just going to say that they probably won't push Sora and Kairi. As in, they won't actually make them get together or anything. But they probably won't go with, like, you know, Soriku. I didn't really expect that whatsoever. 
and apparently I set my bar a little too low. <laughs> I was genuinely, like, shocked how much just straight up, like, actual ass Suriku bullshit was fed into that game. And on the whole, you can think, well, I mean, uh, I, they're kind of, it almost feels like there wasn't enough Riku. <laughs> Even though there there was, it was just like everything was dispersed so strangely. Um, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the gay blade scene, that's when I was the gay shepherd, because I was honest to God, uh, looking at leaks, um, with Gemma who, don't take my pronunciation, it is Gemma, but I'm a huge idiot and I read it as Gemma because I had never heard of the name ever in my life. I had never heard the name Gemma, so I read it as Gemma with a hard G. And so that's what I say. This is my version. Don't be, don't be an idiot like me. Um... But we were basically, we were looking at spoilers with a general avoidance. We didn't want to know, like, huge plot shit, but we were just like, do we have to brace ourselves for terrible romantic decisions? Because <laughs> obviously we're invested, but I just want to know before I go in so I can, like I said, brace myself. I don't want to just sit there and be, like, super disappointed and get the piss knocked out of me, right? Uh... Also, bye, Kristen. Bye! <laughs> um... And then, you know, then we saw, like, and I will be honest, I did cry when we saw that the gay blade was there. And then I did cry when we actually got the whole scene. Um, because there, it was just, like, so much. <laughs> but it was, like, there was, I guess there was, like, a little more, like, anxiety than I expected going in. Uh, because... Like, even though every sense in my like, every human, you know, brain, like, ah, uh, yeah, why wouldn't they ever show the gay blade again? Why wouldn't they ever explore these things that they did? And, like, why wouldn't they continue to explore Sora and Riku's relationship? Rational me knows this, but monkey brain is like, well, they could still fuck it up, right? We don't fucking, we just don't know. Um, so, you know, when it was there, it was just like, it was just, it felt like, oh, thank God, they remembered. You know, they remembered us, the people who want this. <laughs> um. And so it was just really nice. It was like a relief, I guess. But it was also just exciting. I was excited. Uh, also, I will, and I, I'm saying this, and I'm going to say this to all of you because I feel like this is an important lesson. Um. I like to be very open about uh, when I cry and what I cry over. Uh, because, one, uh, crying is good, it's important, and it's healthy, but two, uh, all crying really is- Hi, Kit! Hold on. There you go, Kit's special now. Um, so all crying really is, is that, um, when you're feeling an intense emotion, uh, you know, you're getting all of these chemicals released in your brain, we as you're feeling this stuff, but as it's it's kind of like an overload, um, and you're feeling it really intensely, and crying is a way to kind of like get rid of that. Um, it's really just like overload, and it's just like just removing all of this like excess. And, um, that's why literally, like, any intense emotion can cause you to cry. Because it's just offsetting this, like, huge amount of fucking emotion and shit flooding your brain. Um, if you cry a lot, great. You're just feeling a lot. That's fine. Go for it. You should definitely, absolutely cry. Um, it's just, it just means you're feeling, and feeling is great. We're just people. We're just stupid monkeys on this stupid gay earth. Like, just cry. <laughs> we all cry! <laughs> There's no reason. Usually it scares people because it feels like a loss of control. But knowing more about what actually is causing it is, I don't know, I guess it kind of brings some of that control back. 
So, I don't know. Just never be ashamed of crying. So, just know it's like I saw the gay blade and the the fact that it was ever, you know, that it was like remembered and and something that like I just was excited about with these characters I care about so much. And I just felt a lot, you know? I was just so excited, so I just cried. <laughs> it was just so nice, and it felt good, too. So, I don't know. Please don't be afraid to cry. It's important. Um, also, just a, a side fact that I learned just in regards to crying. Um, actually, the more testosterone in your system, it's not that you feel any less, but, like, it just is different, and you just kind of cry less. I mean, there's obviously social conditioning in terms of, of dudes, and, like, don't cry, that's for stupid babies. And it's like, well, that's a stupid baby idea. But I did, it. reading this, I did think of Riku, because he is Super Muscle's big boy. But it's like, he feels really intensely, but he doesn't, we've never seen him cry. Um, and there have been times, even in the novel, where he's, like, he said, or even, like, I think it was even, like, Repliku was, like, he could feel, like, he was kind of starting to cry, and so then he just, you know, but he, he had his back turned it, and he left and whatever, but it was just, like, Riku, like, felt like crying, like he wanted to, but, like, he just didn't. Uh, <laughs> but it's just interesting. Um... Anyway, when Riku cries, I will cry. When Aqua cried, I cried. Because I was so happy and relieved for her. So, anyway, like I, like I said, crying is good. Please feel free to cry. Don't worry about it. If somebody makes fun of you for crying, fuck them. Because <laughs> you're feeling so much. They aren't. I mean, they could be. They may, you know, they got their own shit going on. Who knows? But it's just like... Just enjoy it. Feel it. It'll help you feel better. Like, no matter what's happening. Either you feel so good already that you're starting to cry because you feel so happy. Or, you know, you need it. <laughs> so. Um. Anyway, to really backtrack all the way to where this started. And I said I had cried when I saw the Gay Blade stuff. And we were looking at spoilers to try and brace for something that would have felt bad otherwise and instead you know we found that and then i was like trying so hard to like make people feel confident you know that things were gonna be okay and that's why i was like i feel like an invincible gay wizard <laughs> and then i got caged through early <laughs> um so I'm here- I'm here to do this again, basically. I'm here to be the gay wizard, who is also the gay shepherd, and I just want to help you feel confident. Because I feel very, very confident, and I hope that at least inspires some kind of hope or looking forward to the future. That I honest to God see that very easily this series could go the exact direction we want it to. <laughs> and I'm kind of feeling really sure that it just might. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to see, you know. Um. And yeah, exactly. Suriku Endgame, actually. Here it is. Um. And like I said, it's okay to, to feel doubt. If you need to feel that you need to pull away from that a bit and just be like, well, if it happens, then thank God, but like you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, that's okay. Never feel bad about needing to do that. Because uh, you're not hurting anything that way. And I can't blame anybody for feeling that way. Um, but I'll just state my case. That's all. Feedback for people who... Well... Here, I'll, I'll go through my stuff, and we'll see. Hehehe. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, that's part of the confidence. It's like, this is, Nomura is a man who functions and runs on, he just runs on spite. All right, he just he just sucks this shit down, and like this is all he lives on, uh, you know, like a protein shake, but it's just spite. <laughs> so something that makes me so 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 super duper confident in the fact that Soriku and game actually, um, is that there is basically foundation not to say that this was always the direction don't don't get me wrong um at best my suspicion is that there might have always been kind of an idea maybe a i would like to do this but like can't exactly for various reasons you know uh kh1 very much was a standalone title they didn't know how well it was gonna do fucking anime mickey mouse game um <laughs> And, uh, you know, once it was successful, it was like, oh, okay, we can start making something out of this. Um, but it's consistent through the series in a genuine way. Um, I'm not sure if it was a Disney executive that told Nomura to make Kyrie. Um, last I remember, I think it was Christian who said this. Because we haven't found the interview, so take this with a grain of salt. That, and I've heard this from several different people, but this that's hearsay. That, that is kind of a rumor, but, like, Kristen was saying that, like, she had, like, talked- She had, like, put, posted the interview on her, like, live journal, but it was, like, so long ago. That, because she, she was like, I remember, I remember it, and I remember posting it. But human memory is fallible, who knows. But the idea was that it was like, um, initially it was just going to be Sora and Riku. Um, Aerith might have been, like, was considered to be not necessarily part of the trio, but like, she was gonna be probably like, she was gonna be like older, probably like older sister kind of influence. Um... But he, it was told, like, no, she should be younger, or it should be somebody who is younger and their age, and so Kyrie was made. Um, and so it, like, wasn't a part of the plan initially. Anyway, that may or may not be true. Don't take that, you know, straight up. That's all. Um... But, okay. Um, like I said, it, um, it's been consistent through the entire series in a very genuine way. Yes, what? Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so, I'm so happy. I'd be drawing while I do this, but, like, I will completely lose track. Honestly, I'll start to... I'll fucking... Uh, uh. Um, maybe I'll draw, like, a little Sora, but. So. Um, yeah, I, I knew it immediately. I was like, I'll do this, and then I just couldn't remember words. Um. The consistent, genuine, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um. It's <laughs> the only thing that is genuinely, like, consistent through, like, it's the only thing that, like, makes sense narratively. Uh, and if that, if you can't take that, at least... <laughs> Actually, um, Riku just, I don't know, actually being gay, or at least actually just being in love with Sora is a, almost, it's like a pretty, like, non, there's like no debate here. Like, even, it doesn't matter, straight fans, gay fans, uh, unless you're really insistent. Like, uh, I oftentimes see people who... People who don't think Riku is gay 
are oftentimes people who are, not to say it's like, <laughs> good people who ship Sokai, but they're oftentimes somebody who ship Sora and Kairi because, like, the idea of Riku being gay, whether Sora returned those feelings or not, seems to be kind of like a, I feel like a, maybe a threat on the, the ship, say? Um... Even though, like, if just at, like, a base level, it was like, oh, Riku has feelings, but maybe they're unrequited or, or something like that, if you wanted to take it that way. But it's oftentimes, it's it's usually, like, it's usually because it's a threat. <laughs> like, it feels like, oh, if we actually were like, he's gay, then, uh, <sighs> Um... But it's just, like, everything he does, all of his motivations, and this was something that I was talking to, like, talking to my friend Joe about. Uh, my, he, he's, like, the perfect example by conversation I had with him. Um, in that I literally just kind of talked about what happens in the story, and putting it into perspective was, like, it was just like, oh, oh, uh, oh, oh, okay. Because the lengths that Riku goes to, and we make jokes about it where it's just like, yeah, you know, whatever. It's just like, because they're just best friends. Ha ha. <laughs> you know, I die for you, bro, kind of a thing. But it's like, the level of dedication and the things he does for one person, despite himself or, like, their whether there's little to no gain for him, um, is really hard to explain as literally anything else but love. <laughs> um, whether, you know, and it's like, people could go like, well, I think it's platonic, it's whatever, it's like a best friend thing. Uh, I oftentimes, <laughs> like, to my friend Nami, who's one of my best friends, and I love her dearly, you know, it's like, well, okay, would, like, and it's like, I have my best friend Nami versus, like, you know, my partner and stuff, and it's like, would I do all of these exact same things? Would I go to these lengths? Like, foregoing literally everyone else in my life for this one person? Just because we're best friends? And it's not that that, say, couldn't be a thing. Um. But it's... Mm, there's literally no reason. Oh, okay, yeah, no, no, no. Like, d I'm, I'm trying to find the words. Because it's not that you couldn't, you can't do, like, everything for somebody who's, like, they're your best friend, you know? Um, because, like, that's why I was, like, comparing it with, oh, Nami, and she's done so, so much for me, and I would do so, so much. I'd do, like, you know, I'd do whatever I could, but, um... I'm trying to remember, I've because I've worded this before. Because, okay, talking to my friend Joe, like I was saying, the, the straight, <laughs> my straight guy friend, where I was like, okay, all right, Joe. So all of the stuff that Riku does, all of these things, and he was like, "Okay, well, I mean, I would do that for and our our friend Seb. They're basically like I'd always joke that the two of them were married <laughs> because they're just like super duper best friends forever. You know, they're just like brothers basically. And there is a difference between caring so deeply for someone but not having romantic feelings. And when I explained that, I was like, okay. You know, Riku does all of the stuff, and he throws away his entire entire identity, you know, everything he worked for, uh, to become, like, the one man who, like, literally possessed him, <laughs> the person he would hate the most, just to wake Sora up. And Joe was like, well, I, you know, I do all that stuff for Seb, and it was like, that's very, very sweet. And that's usually the argument I see, but it's like, that's not the whole context, is the uh, this continues on, you know? And I was like, okay, and I know, and I, and I see that, and I get that. Um, there's a lot, you know, with everything else, 
but there's again there's dream drop this continues and then dream drop is like okay look pal and it's not like it suddenly just got gay in dream drop it just continued on what was already built um it's exactly in line with literally everything all of his motivations from before though this isn't exactly just this isn't like well this this should just convince you because it could just be like oh yeah riku seems super gay but like they'll never do anything with it and they'll just say you care for him like a brother you know and it's just like that'd be such an easy way to go but i'm so like Kingdom Hearts 3, like, genuinely convinced me. Because there is nowhere else to go. Um, but basically putting it into scale, into context, for my straight friend who would be- who similarly is like, yeah, I would do absolutely anything for, like, the- my most bestest friend ever. Um, and he himself was like, oh. Ah, yeah, Riku is gay. I get this now. Like, there, and it was like somebody who was like, I personally would do so. I would do these things for my friend, right? Um. Uh, yeah. The what is sorry. I'll, I'll get to the. I'll get to the novels after a bit. Um. But um. I guess it was just, like, looking at everything on the whole, especially, was, like, not only is it consistent, like, it's following a path of, like, incredibly, like, you would expect, like, you know, almost, almost best case scenario. That you're like, ah, oh, yeah, this character, if you were to say to someone experiencing it for the first time, and you were like, Riku is acting out because he has feelings he doesn't understand, and is probably dealing with just being gay or just the fact that he is in love with his best friend, whether he really realizes the ramifications of that or not. And this is consistent to all of his character motivation throughout the rest of the series. And you could just say that. And then it just is true and follows exactly this path going the whole fucking series. There's not a second where it wavers ever <laughs> is the thing. It doesn't so it's just like, oh, that is, it, that's Riku, <laughs> there he is. There's, like, literally nothing that's been done that would ever cast doubt into my heart that, like, that would be it, you know? Um, whether they act on it as being a romantic thing between both of them, you know, that's a different story, but I'm here to tell you that I don't know how they can work around it at this point. Um... So, uh, n we have all of this. We have literally all of Riku's entire motivation. Um. Hold on. Um, so, anyway. So, obviously, there's, um, just, you know, discussing characters, where it's taking, you know, we can look at this and go, like, this is the most logical explanation, and it, and it's consistent, and it does not fall off that path of, of Riku's motivation and what fuels literally everything he does. Um... We have that, that's fine. Um, it's the <laughs> Everything is... Like, like... Just like, okay, like Steam has said in the chat, uh, so Riku is so incredibly, beautifully genuine and honest. None of it feels like queer baiting is the thing, because it's, it's not like it's, um, dropping scraps. And leaving you that little bit of wiggle room where you think, oh man, this would be so great. Um, 
it's hard to convey the scale of how literally uh, pivotal and core to the series and the story uh, their relationship is. And we can fall right back to the, ah, uh, this, this, the series, Kingdom Hearts, is literally about Sora, Riku, their relationship, and how they grow up. Um, and if you were to think, say, that, well, I don't know, that would be giving Nomura too much credit, that, you know, he would even be considering this aspect. Um, I feel like queer reading is a term that gets misused too much nowadays. Uh, yes, I can agree. Uh, it's often very, queer baiting specifically is a deliberate attempt to bait queer people into consuming the media and their content, their merchandise, whatever, get them hooked into the show. But there's there's an obvious maybe I feel like saying there's an obvious like transparency to it. I feel, but that's not to discredit people who would see it that way and be genuinely invested. Um because they're doing that on purpose. They're they're doing that to to suck you in. They want you to see it that way. So if you see it that way, then well, that was their point. So don't ever feel like, you know, ah, I feel stupid like I was duped. But it's like, no, that they, they wanted you to, and it's really shitty that they would do that and not follow through. They're literally just trying to, to get you into it, that's all. Um, but, uh, it's, again, it's the fact that it's consistent and it's honestly the most, like, <laughs> and I will get to the straight baiting, that is something I have said. <laughs> um, uh, it's not only consistent, and I'll say it again, I'll, I keep repeating myself because it's kind of hard, because there's so much. I'm like, uh, uh, um, okay. Uh, it, it, but it is treated genuinely. It's never, like... Like I said, they're not dropping scraps. They're not just giving little, like, teehees and then, you know, just going straight back into, like, all of the straight shit. It's quite literally, okay, here's KH1, here's Sokai, kind of. You know, we got some of this stuff, and it's fine. It's, like, written in a genuine way. You know, you can read it as, um, <laughs> you can read it as, oh, you know, uh, they really have feelings for each other, or in the greater context of the rest of the series, that it's like, you know, that it's compet. So, however, it's fine. Um, but then moving forward, and considering everything that was happening, the, the shift in focus is not only something I would have, like, expected, it then actually happened. <laughs> so, the idea that, okay, you know, um, you, Sora could have gone home, but he has to go find Riku, his best friend. His best friend, Riku, who is gone, right? And he goes to do this, and then all of this shit happens in Castle Oblivion. <laughs> um, there's plenty of shit there that even just fuels the, the Riku fun stuff, and Riku's side, and just there's, but we don't need to go into that. We're just gonna follow just the overarching, like plot and what we, you would expect a person and how they could react to these kind of situations. But you know, we uh, have Kingdom Hearts one. Riku fucks up. He's lashing out. All of these things. He feels really fucking bad. Um, Sora goes to find him. Sora sleeps for a year. Riku does everything in his power for a year to bring him back, so much so that even though he feels guilty about it, uh, he knowingly makes the choice to more or less end the lives of people to bring him back. Um, so, you wake up, a year has passed, and the world kind of just went on without Sora, and we don't really get to see into his thoughts and feelings so much. We get little glimpses, but we don't get super in-depth thoughts. But the idea of waking up and every finding out everyone forgot about you 
this entire year and things have changed the rebuilding of hollow bastion all of this stuff and he's just rolling with it but like there's one thing he's focused on it's finding riku it's whatever and i felt that it was good and purposeful even that um you know he still is thinking about kairi throughout kingdom hearts 2 and it is very specifically Kairi from Kingdom Hearts 1, because she, he wouldn't have any idea what she looks like at this point. Um, but meeting back up, um, and seeing her after a year, seeing how, you know, it's like, okay, um, you know, it's, 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 she's different. It's literally the first thing he says to her. Um, there's no, like, happy, super crazy joyous reunion or anything it's just like ah uh, and it's like you have changed Kyrie. and then he goes immediately from that to you know apologizing that he couldn't yeah you are different Kyrie. um there's this there's like a hesitance there's a ah uh, you know this really is like it's the same person but it's not and this whole world went on without him well, there's one person who didn't. <laughs> and that was Riku. <laughs> um, but it's like the actual genuine natural progression of I maybe have feelings for my friend. And then all of this shit happens and your friend changes and you wake up after all of this time and find that they're like way different. And it's jarring and it's not super, you know, uh... Uh, yeah, I thought I was straight and it was only in love with the idea of you is a really good uh, good way to put it. But it's like, this is like a really reasonable like story, <laughs> like the narrative conclusion of, oh, Kyrie is different. Li she's literally like way super different than the Kyrie we have been shown that Sora was even thinking about earlier in the game. They made a point of that. Here she is, she's young. And then, you know, he has a natural reaction of like, oh, oh, well, uh, things are different. It's still Kyrie, but like, things are different. And it just makes a, a lot of sense. Yeah. Here, I'll put it on. God damn it. <laughs> Fucking scroll button. I'm gonna play the normal version first. Because the, the words make it hard for me to talk. That's that's the thing. Boy, I could talk about- I love Riku's fucking theme, it's so good. Um, especially because it's like, it comes and it's like so tentative and almost kind of creeping in a way, you know? And it kind of grows into something much more confident when the melody kicks in. Like, when it really gets into it and it's just like, it's- it's- he it doesn't stop, it's like a, a continuous like note, you know? Here it goes. And it's just more confident, but still regretful, in that it's kind of almost a way that it's like, you know, there's a there's a regret in it, but it it's still charging forward, I guess, is the Um Okay. Sorry, I'm I'm trying to really think of a <laughs> How to how to go about this? Oh, okay. Anyway, um, um, so anyway, um, the just the narrative whole following through. Ah, here we go. Um, I woke up after a year. A girl I thought I maybe liked. Eh, she changed a lot. That's not a bad thing, but things are different, and she's not who 
I thought maybe I liked. And then you get this actual really normal ass reaction for it. Um, that for some reason is read as nervous or flustered by some who want to read it that way, despite the fact that we do see him as nervous, flustered, and bashful. Um, when he is even, like, thinking about, like, thinking about dancing with her, and we get, we get the reaction of him, you know, he's like, ah, you know, and he, oh, he scratches his cheek and stuff, and, you know, he's smiling and everything, and it's and it's fine. And they're like, oh, that's a natural reaction. And then, like, we get this, and he's just like, oh. Uh. <laughs> um. And then, of course, we immediately get a really, really emotional reunion with Reese in the afterward. And uh, if there's anything that you can at least give Nomura credit, is he knows how to, like... One, I mean, he's uh, he's a man of visuals. He's an artist. He's a designer. He could do you know fun stuff like this. But he did, he knows how to direct a scene. Um, the emotional like weight that the series holds, like even with all of its goofiness, even with everything, what usually keeps people engaged is the emotional investment in the characters. That's what keeps people here. Um. <laughs> And it's really good at it, is the is the thing. Um it's uh I know what Here we go. Play the project of Saudi one. So it's hard, like I find it honestly very difficult to say that with the whole rest of everything else and how they're good at conveying emotions and delivering an emotional scene with these characters, that suddenly these scenes between Sora and Riku um, are just fuck-ups. Especially if it's consistent and literally makes the most sense. Like, you, like suggesting that this is the direction that they're they're carrying at least at least Riku if you're gonna have trouble accepting Sora at least Riku there's never a point at which it falters from from that interpretation um so well yeah it, it's hard to like Things can be done on accident, of course. I think we can all accept that, oh, you know, sometimes people do unknowingly, like, head this direction because they're just kind of ignorant to this kind of thing. But this is over the case of we have to consider 17 fucking years. This isn't just, like, a one-off uh, project. This isn't, like, just one game, you know. Um, this is an entire series over the course of many, many different games. These are all varying separate projects. And the character, like, direction is... The, uh, the character direction is consistent over all of them, is the thing. Is, like, that, that all remains true. Um... And then we have all of Dream Drop Distance, which really, really super heavily leans into it and is about, you know, Riku and all of these things. And it's, like, hard to believe, like, all of the shit they put in there. But, um, I think, okay, I'm gonna talk about Kingdom Hearts 3 and why, like, we know, we know everything up to Kingdom Hearts 3. We've all been here. So, Kingdom Hearts 3, this is what it's set up. This is literally what it's set up in the narrative, in the game. And it's easy to forget when worried about some of the smaller stuff. Um, so, finishing Kingdom Hearts 3, this is what is left open to follow through on. Um... <laughs> So we had, going in, we had Nomura himself. Uh, some, somebody link me. Somebody put the tweet, put the doodle in so I could see it. 
I'll play it. I'll play it. Oh. 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 <laughs> Also, I always feel so fucking immediately, like, swept up whenever I hear Sora's theme. Oh, it just makes me feel so good. <laughs> Do you know how many times I've honestly just looked at, like, Sora and then just started to well up with tears? <laughs> Often. <laughs> um... Okay, so KH3, you know, we didn't know what we were going to get. We didn't know where we were going to go. We didn't know what was going to happen. And to put into scale what we did get in terms of what has been perceived as, by many, a uh, canon straight romance of Sora and Kairi, we have found that, um, you know, that's lines were, one, translated poorly and with uh, an assumptive bias in mind. I kind of really doubt, I don't, I, honest to God, my own opinion, I don't think it was anything malicious. Uh, I think it was just an assumption based on ignorance. Um, and this has been brought up before. Uh, even, even Steam had talked about it and stuff, where it's just like, look, uh, me and several others, Steam, Steam included, uh, work on Indivisible, right? We work on this game, and we're making the literal art assets for the actual characters that go into the game. Like, this isn't just like, and I did a little thing. It's like, here is, this is a finished product that you guys will see that we did, but I don't know anything about the story, and I know more than most, because my friend Nami, who I mentioned earlier, who is my boss, technically... <laughs> Um, she helped with the dev process, right? Like, sh and she lived here in my house, <laughs> and I've seen things that, you know, it just happens when it, she works at home, and you just, I'm walking, hey, Nami, you know, and then it's just like, oh, is that <laughs> indivisible? And I'm, like, seeing, like, in-development shit, and it's not going anywhere, but, you know, I know shit I shouldn't, and I don't know anything about the story. I have no fucking clue where or what's gonna happen in this thing and I <laughs> I don't do something like that isn't important um so it's just like look you can be translating it but it's like especially something that's as huge as Kingdom Hearts with somebody who is uh, I'm not sure eccentric is the right word but somebody as vice gripped on this fucking story as Nomura who has kind of whittled down this, like, team of, of writers and, like, took it over for himself because he was, like, he trusts so few people with the actual story and how it goes to, like, and to understand it, you know? Um, I really kind of doubt that even when you're translating the game, you know where the story's going. I don't think they do at all. And in the Ultimania, they also confirmed that uh, how it usually goes is that they make the whole entire fucking script first and do all their shit and record all these lines and stuff and then they send it to get translated into English and when it gets translated they then look over it to make sure it's translated in a way that, that they like. Right? Makes sense. They're like, okay, yeah, move forward with this. Maybe change this, blah, blah, blah. That's how it usually goes. This is not how it went with Kingdom Hearts 3. This this was very, very different. Uh, they had to do a lot of this stuff on the fly. They didn't get to check things like they wanted. This was actually an issue, and it made it really, really difficult. Uh, and they had to record, like, audio and stuff at, like, the same time. Everything. It was all happening, like, on the fly. Um, so we know for a fact that this wasn't normal in the first place. And then even just anybody who could speak the goddamn language can see... Oh, they just straight up changed lines, like just entirely, <laughs> um, and in ways that like heavily lean one way over the other. And so when you're going in, you don't have any idea who or what or where 
the changing expressions thing, I don't, I don't understand. Um, I have my suspicions, the two I can think of. I'll get to those in just a second. Um, but with the translations that did happen that, say, pushed Sora and Kairi and, like, made things way bigger than they in were intended to, um, I think came a lot from, well, why, we don't, why would we expect it to go this way? Because, again, just, like, just ignorance, just assumption of, like, well, oh, uh, I mean, this just must be how it is because that's how it usually goes. You know, the guy and the girl get together and whatnot, and so, you know, we'll just kind of help that along a little bit. You know, we know that the, the Japanese can be a little, uh, you know, a little more subtle about this thing, so we'll just give it that little push it needs. Um, I actually don't really like this rendition of Kairi's theme. It goes way too long for my taste. <clears throat> I just get bored of it really fast. I'm going back to Riku. Um... Right, okay, given that, given that romance a little push, right? Where something like literally Riku, and this phrase is used several times throughout the game. Uh, for people who did read the doc, we brought up several uh, translations that were like, okay, look, this is what it actually says, and this is important, but those were not the only mistranslations we found. Those were just the only ones. Good night, Ket. Those were just the only ones that were like pertinent to what, you know, what we were doing at the time, just in regards to the theory and stuff. Um, but there were quite a few. <laughs> and it was almost almost every example. Um, almost every example of, like, Sora interacting with Kairi was, like, stilted towards Hi, Claude. Night, JD. Bye-bye. Um, okay, yeah, anyway, it was all stilted towards, like, oh, this is definitely obviously romance, and something like, you know, Riku saying, like, this whole protect someone, like, protect the person who matters most, or some your treasured, precious, important person, which is something that was said several times, several times throughout the game. <laughs> which, not only that, <laughs> just with that context alone, it's like, okay, yeah, thematically, that would make sense that they were pushing this thing, and this is an important, like, note for Riku's character development, which it is, which is another thing we pointed out in the doc, because it was all important to proving, oh, yeah, he performs an act of true love, which is, like, the anchoring point in the in a timeline, like, divergence, basically. <laughs> I say that like it's simple, but, <laughs> um... We brought up what was pertinent. That that's that's the important thing to take away from it. But almost like not almost, but literally Yeah, um the Ultimania actually points out these things. Because it's not just us taking from context clues. The Ultimania several different times more or less confirmed the importance of this this theming of protecting somebody who is precious to you. Or protecting, you know, the person, this person who matters the most, um, was a purposeful theme throughout the all of the worlds as a thing. How do people use the Ultimania as an excuse for Riku Nami? Like it, it, it literally was like clarifying what I had figured. How it's like, oh, uh, yeah, it was literally just Riku acting on Repliku's will to go through with and get Naminé because he wasn't there anymore, you know? And that's it. <laughs> like, before people were worried about it, but then it was just like, here you go. This was, here's literally Nomura's words that this was the case. It was just Riku acting on Repliku's behalf. More or less. And then also, you know, Naminé is his friend too. It's not, like, that crazy. Um.
I think what it is, people take, like, the idea... Because I think there's a translation that, that's worded kind of strangely, where it's like, ah, uh, there's like an inheritance of feelings, where it's more like, he was doing this to, you know, like, to follow through on Replica's wishes, on his feelings, what he wanted to do for Naminé. He didn't literally gain Repliku's feelings. Like, you know, it's not... It's not the same. Um, anyway. Uh... <laughs> there, all of the translation stuff... So, all everything to do with Sokai. In Kingdom Hearts 3... Now, remember, this is the most recent thing we have. Kingdom Hearts 3. What we got was... We have... Kyrie almost basically non-existent the whole game. And towards the end, yeah, of course, you know, we know it didn't get treated super well. But if we're just going to look at this in terms of, like, her own, what she has to move forward with, what happened with Sora, we had a Paupu scene where Sora very visibly looks uncomfortable throughout pretty much the whole thing. And that's not even a stretch. That's, like, I was literally looking at this last night to be like, man, uh, <laughs> really super just actually is uncomfortable and it's like you have to deliberately animate these things um which again uh people like chalk up to poor direction which i really don't think is the case because again when everything else is so good and so consistent with their characters if you were to take to heart the you know, things have changed for Sora. He doesn't feel the same way anymore. So, you know, his reunion with Kyrie was kind of maybe a wake-up call to that. His, the, the hug was awkward, you know? And then past that, literally like every game past that, is uh, Kyrie is really not involved, even in times she should have been like, recoded, um, and Dream Drop, and everything that happens in Dream Drop, and even the dive into Sora's heart that Riku does, where all of these super-duper important memories, because it's not just, and Riku's there, because it's an influence, because Riku is here in his heart. No, 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 it's important memories from all across the series, and they're pretty much, like, 80% Riku. <laughs> um, it's just, like, a noticeable lack of Kairi, Con like, purposeful, like, she is not there anymore. Which would make a lot of sense. <laughs> um, if you're just, if you just actually take in, like, if this is purposeful direction that he thought he had feelings at one point, things change, he doesn't really have these feelings anymore, and thus, this stuff is... Uh, this stuff is just kind of leaving him uncomfortable, or, you know, he just doesn't know how to say no, or he doesn't know exactly what to say or what he wants. And they even go out of their way to have Sora say that in Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> um. But we have the Paupu scene, he's uncomfortable. He does this, and he... God, like I said, I was looking at it last night. We have this, he's uncomfortable. It seems and feels really one-sided. After that, we have... And we have reason to believe that, you know, things have gone south once before. Um, we have uh, Sora trying to protect her with a hug, in which she honestly looks really, like, kind of confused. Or like, uh -huh. Um, And it's very odd. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have the tunnel scene. And, and that's that's it. That's literally it. That that's all there is. There's you have that, and then you finish it out with Sora. What seems what reads as he's saying goodbye to her on it on the tree. Uh, she cries. He's fine. That's that's literally it. That's all they have. It's just Kyrie is there. Uh, Ky uncomfortable Sora. She brings him and. It Riku's the light, which is just pretty much provable with any and all context around it. And then Sora saving her and being like, bye, and like not visibly like 
feeling upset about it. Um... Uh, also, the shielding with your body thing, I don't know why they just kept doing that this game. To be honest, like, Aqua did it too, and I was like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> um... So, it, it's... Something, I guess. But it's like, th this is this is basically... that. That's basically all they have. And, um... They end it with... Everything that they set up or had, anything that they had open with Kyrie, is closed. All those doors are closed. All she had that was left open was the Paupu thing, um, supposed feelings for Sora, and and that's it. Really, that's that's all they had for her. And so Kingdom Hearts three happens, and what do they do? They don't have any outright confirmation. Any of the quote-unquote romantic scenes, of which there were, uh, super-duper few. <laughs> like, two-ish. Um, and even then, they were translated to be more romantic than intended. From the beginning. Where, with the Palpu scene, um, Kyrie describes it as- And this isn't just like, oh, she's describing it this way, and it was described that way for- and this is just how it's been translated the whole time. Um, she describes it as with the sharing of the Paupu and reenacting their cave drawing. Um, that it's supposed to just be kind of like a charm. Like a like a fun kid kind of like, th this will be a charm so we can always find each other. A and, that was, and that was it. But what we got was, and now their destinies are intertwined forever. They finally shared the Paupu fruit. Even, and so, it wasn't supposed to be that way in the first place, and we got this really heavy-handed version of it, which felt really bad and really weird with everything else, because it wasn't supposed to be that in the first place. And then we find out in the Ultimania, one, even Sora's voice actor is like, well, uh, sharing the Paupu, I don't know, I don't feel like it has to be romantic, and you could say that it's just like a personal opinion, but... <laughs> Which is, you know, yeah, that's fine. I'm not saying that this is just, like, so exactly hard fact, but it's just, like, as the character's voice actor, and if this were to continue in the future, why would you say maybe that it wasn't romantic at all? And, like, why is there no follow-up on or discussion about their relationship or where they where they stand? There, there was nothing. There has been nothing about them. If they have been so confirmed where is it <laughs> where 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 is it we don't there's nothing left open for kairi the paupu fruit was taken care of uh we find out also for those of you who don't know um nomura had them record two different versions of the paupu scene one where they share one and one where they don't, because at the time, it was undecided exactly how he wanted to show, or like how much he wanted to show, say, their their feelings on this. As in like a, it reading like really strong, or like, you know, anything like that. It was like, there was literally a potential that, like, the fact that there could have been a scene where they just didn't, should show exactly how, I don't know, important it was they did. Which was, like, they could have gone without it. <laughs> and they didn't. And then the scene we got is Sora is uncomfortable and it was to be, like, a charm so they could find each other again. And that's just straight from word of God. It was, like, not really intended. We could have just gotten it to where they didn't actually share it at all. And when they did share it, it was purposely, visibly, like, not romantic, you know? So, alright, that's out. And then we have the tunnel scene, which all of the context surrounding it is like, Ah, Riku's the light. We've made our case for that. Good lord, have we made our case for this. Um, 
yeah, and also Riku was there at the start of the at the start of the whole scene, and Sora was concerned about him. And even when Kyrie tells him he wanted to be alone for a bit, it's not like, oh, okay, all right, I get it. You know, it, it's literally just it's Sora. Just he's like, hmm, and like he doesn't buy it. And the only thing that rips him from this train of thought is Kyrie shoving a palpu in his face, and he's like really confused. <laughs> so okay, look, we can agree that like this. Not only what we got was hammed up, it wasn't in, ever intended to be romantic in the first place. Um, so that's out. And with the tunnel scene, which, like I said, Riku, light, all context points to Riku being the light, which there's even, there's so much of it. Um, the whole, with Kyrie and the taking the hand and the, he says, you make me feel strong, Kyrie. The line was so horrendous. It's not even close. It's, like, not even close to the same as what the original line was. Kyrie saying that she believed in him. You know, she just simply believed. Um. Yeah, I don't understand how people think that Riku is a wingman. Um. A bad take. Anyway. Um. When he says... Like, yeah, yeah, he says, like, as I thought, you are strong, Kyrie. When that that was the original line. And so you can clearly see the um the shift, the the bias, the English take on this whole thing of you make me feel strong, Kyrie, which feels not only out of character, it's like a really kind of a Western I guess, Western male weird take kind of a thing, where instead of about Kyrie and her accomplishment, it's suddenly like, this is useful to me. Like, you make me feel strong. And it's like, while that is a, a valid thing to say to somebody, in this situation, sounds really ungrateful. Um, and strange. And it was just not even close <laughs> to what it was supposed to be, which was Sora, you know talking about his friend and like wow you are strong my friends are so great you know <laughs> and then you know it makes sense that after like compliment like calling her strong and being like yeah fuck yeah Kyrie, you're so cool <laughs> um <laughs> i'm sorry about I'm sorry that it's like this will be just on you can just come back and watch it later if you want. Um So we have that and it's like, oh, flatter Kyrie. Everything's, you know, yay. Kyrie, you're so good. <laughs> and then she, you know, it's just like, oh, and then she has a little laugh and it, it's sweet. See, that interaction is very sweet. And takes his hand and it's fine. Um and then, what what do we get in the end after that? So, okay, we know that both cases were made to be romantic when they weren't ever intended to. And it's not just in interpretive, it's Ultimania Nomura Word of God interviews <laughs> saying that this wasn't the case. Um, and then, if this were to continue, if anything with Kyrie was to continue at this point, they would not have brought her back. As in, it would have been open in any capacity to go find her. But the fact is, they just, they never show us, quote-unquote, this journey. Or anything to do with it. She's just back. She's safe. And that's done. There's nothing to explore. There's nothing left. Her, they did the Palpu thing. There's, there are no doors open for Kyrie at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. And yeah, it literally could have just ended on, and Sora goes to save Kairi, and then it's like, okay, cool, we could expect maybe the next-ish game to go, you know, like they did, Sora goes to save Riku, and then we get like 40 games of him trying to find Riku, and, well not, him find, trying to find, then finding Riku, and then doing stuff with Riku, and then not thinking about Kairi at all. Um, but with this, it was, Kairi is gone, she could just basically be dead. She's back now. Goodbye, Kyrie. And then he leaves. <laughs> and so, like, I ask you genuinely, where do they go from there with Kyrie? 
Where? Where do they go? What have they left open? Unless, and if you were to say or think or want to, I don't know, well, they're gonna go, you know, maybe she's gonna go find him. She's whatever, anything that's left open. But the secret movie just blew the whole thing out of the water. It's like, not only do we see that every door has been closed for Kyrie. We know for a fact that moving forward, it's all, it's about Sora and Riku. And I'm still not even into the details about the setup for the two of them. This is just looking at Kyrie and the potential of finishing, finishing out with, say, Sokai or the straight option. Even if you wouldn't think that the gay option is on the table, the straight option is almost completely squashed into the dirt. Uh, just, <laughs> there's nothing for her. <coughs> there's nothing left. Um, and then, and we'll give this a good watch. I'll give this shit a good watch. Um, so I guess just t take that little fact, take that little tidbit of information that, yeah. The, you're right, put it in your pocket, stick it in your wallet, that little bit of information that if they were to continue with this, this straight agenda, they have done their... They left Kyrie no way out of her room. It's four walls, no door. She's in a box. Kyrie's in the box. <laughs> She's saved. She's safe. She's back. Sora left, and we know moving forward, it's just Sora and Riku. And like I said, that's barring everything else. Um. So we have that. That's that's KH three everybody <laughs> for Sora and Kyrie was uh, no romantic scenes and then now we get all of the stuff with Sora and Riku um but we are going to watch this first that's that's the reality going to going to see this here I will get to the Riku development, because there is way more than people realize. There's actually a lot, and I'm going to... I'm going to get to that. We're going to watch this first, though. And also, like, literally everything I will say about, like, what has been, yeah, the, just the final world theme and how it's here and it's wild. Beautiful baby boy. Oh, I love him. Um, okay, one, obviously we have this whole setup of them searching for each other, and it's fantastic, and I love it. God, they're beautiful. Oh my god! Holy shit! <laughs> and they're in the sh- <laughs> Because here's also, here's Yozora. <laughs> uh, uh, 
And here is Master of Masters, which we know is for sure actually Master of Masters. Nomura said so, which I don't know why we would ever think otherwise, but... I'm just saying, like, pretty consistently, when it's like, uh, given all context, I think that I'm pretty sure that's Master of Masters. And then it's just, oh, it is. <laughs> so, okay, I'm gonna talk about exactly, literally only, what the game has set up. This is just strictly what the game has set up for the two of them. Okay? Alright? Nothing else. We're just going to talk about what happens in the game and exactly what there's, what is left open with it. Okay. So. A lot happens in Kingdom Hearts 3. But also a lot of nothing happens at the same time. When the majority of the game is Sora just, like, 80% of the game is just Sora going through. I'm sorry that, like, I'm fucking up your sleeping schedule. I have this I have this effect on people. <laughs> this wouldn't be the first time, baby. But, okay. I'll, I'll try to keep talking and not get too distracted. I'm still looking at the chat, but it keeps me- it, I have to stop to, like, read, because it's just process. Um. Soft and easy. I don't have to think too much. Good night. Good night. Thank you. You can listen to this later. Oh, I can't. All right, time to feel some feelings. Um, okay. So, strictly just with what we got set up, Kingdom Hearts 3, and I was like, remember when I said that I thought I came in with too low of expectations? Um. That I was honest to God shocked with how much we actually got, and this was, this was about a, a first... This is just a first time through, right? Um, this is a first time through, and we got way more than I think people realize the first time, because a lot of stuff is, there's a lot of the game to take in. And like I said, there's a whole lot of shit, and then like, but a whole lot of nothing at the same time, when it's just Sora going through worlds most of the game. And then we get just kind of like, oh, suddenly everything crammed in at the end. Um, so it's easy to forget shit that happens, honestly, or to look at it in a clearer context. And I was one of the lucky lucky few, <laughs> one of those lucky bastards that got the game uh, exceedingly early after I had already been looking at spoilers. So I was uh, quite ahead on intaking all of this. I, I got to sit on this a lot longer than others, right? Um. <laughs> so I really got to, like, sit and absorb everything. But, um... So... What the game has set up for us as a TLDR is an underlying... Underlying feelings or things that have not been realized by Sora, uh, realized or addressed or acknowledged, uh, in regards to Sora. Um, he admits openly that he does not know much about love, which really isn't a throwaway line. Um, it was during a, a pretty big important moment, and it's a perp you put it out, you put it there. <laughs> I don't know much about love, but I know what it means to share my heart with others. And then we have, you know, kind of heavy, heavy-ish Kyrie kind of coming on a little bit to like, hey, stuff me, and then and yeah, this is Paprika. Um, this is specifically, the song is a drop filled with memories. <laughs> but, um, Sora has feelings underlying that he hasn't addressed and he doesn't address the whole game. 
but multiple things show them to be there. Um, we also have Riku with a pretty outright confirmation that he has feelings or at least holds Sora in the highest regard. Um, but we're just gonna go, uh, look, dude, it's not that hard to figure out that he's super gay and he has feelings. This is not an exaggeration. This isn't, haha, how gay. This is just actually everything they have presented leading up to this point. Riku has big gay romantic feelings. <laughs> this much is obvious. Um... So we have that set up with Riku has feelings, Sora has feelings he doesn't understand yet, and all doors with Kairi are closed. And then moving forward, we have just the two of them in a game where there is another character that is literally a combination of the two of them. And what they have left open in regards to Riku's character um, is, like I said, has feelings and also still has misery inside. Um, that he still has, like, you know, he still has the sadness, anxiety, these bad feelings. They didn't really go anywhere. He's in a much better place. But these things have not really been addressed <laughs> at all. Um, and say, like, if you were to say, like, well, it doesn't mean that they're going to follow up on this. Consider, like, well, would they follow up on anything with Kyrie? We literally got nothing with her. There was no passing comment on anything. There was nothing that was like, oh, what's this about Kyrie? And then just, like, you know, then they just fuck off. It's just, like... There's nothing. We got, like, nothing from her side, but we got insight into into Riku, how he's still feeling, and then his feelings playing in a very important part later on. Um, but to delve into and elaborate on it, at least in Sora's case, because I feel like a lot of people don't fully understand, or, or it, he's not easily read, Sora, his feelings, he wears his heart on his sleeve, but there's been like little to no self-reflection uh, by or for him. Like, he, he kind of hasn't had time and also a part of it is just I would argue part of it is just growing up. Uh, he's been a little preoccupied. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of death and well, not even death, there's a lot of shit going on that he's dealing with. Uh, and as it's set up, as it is set up, all of these side stories, all of this, all of these extra characters, everything to do with this large cast that has been built up, has been more or less taken care of or wrapped up in a way that's also satisfying too, in a in a believable, satisfying way. You know, the Wayfinder trio—they're okay. They're kind of they—they they got closure. You know, we have the, the Sea Salt Trio, we got is it plus, <laughs> plus one, um, Syax is there, or Isa, but, um, we have, like, all of this stuff wrapped up in a way that's like, we could explore this later if we needed to, but we don't have anything left terrible, we don't have anything left open-ended aside from, uh, uh, Axel and Syax and, and, you know, subject... X, which is definitely absolutely uh, fucking scold. <laughs> um, but, uh, so we have all the side shit. We have this weight shed. We have this setup of Sora is just got something going on. Yeah, Subject X is me. Um, I'm every mystery in Kingdom Hearts. And I set all of this up. Uh, and then we have stuff, yeah, with Ventus, because we're still finding stuff out about, uh, cucks. Cucks. <laughs> so, um, that, that remains open. But, um, it, yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, the nobodies that, like, we have yet to explore. We have stuff like that, but it's just, like, 
the characters that we have been following for the most part this whole time, um, <laughs> you know, they're wrapped up. Uh, they're wrapped up, and like we know, officially moving forward, it's about Sora and Riku and this fusion of Sora and Riku, which doesn't mean fucking nothing. Um, but, okay. You have to remember, and you have, you have to, like, consider that, like, what this would mean, right? Okay. So, start, literally starting the game, you know, in the dive to the heart, I feel like people forget this, or forget or don't really comprehend, like, the weight of the symbolism. Um, that he dives into his own heart, uh, not only are the memories that you pick from uh, to select your stats, which they're about important things. You know, we have Riku, we have we have Donald and Goofy and Mickey. We have Bubbis, you know, and then we have like Nomine, which he shouldn't, he can't even remember this memory specifically. We have Roxas and and that's it. And there's like nothing. There is nothing with Kyrie at this point. Um, which could be nothing, but it is of note. She's not there, and she hasn't been there in his heart, as far as we can see, with even Riku's dive and p other games where it, she should be important. She's not there, and this is still consistent. She's not there. So it's a dive to the heart. This is literally his heart. This is literally, like, his feelings, his heart, okay? <laughs> And we do have direct one-to-one, -one, undoubted, like, here it is. Here is what should be Riku. And instead, it's a light. It's this light in the darkness. It's this light in his heart. Which he is then also torn away from. Um. But. <laughs> yeah, there, there are several, like, different things where there's, like, no mention in, in the journals, honestly. Um, but, okay. You know, literally, <laughs> literally Riku is the light in his heart. <laughs> That's not nothing, is the thing. You have to consider that isn't nothing. And they don't ever touch on it. They don't ever touch on it, they don't speak about it, there's no exploration. And so, like, I just ask genuinely, Ooh. Why, if they, why wouldn't they ever explore that again? Also, good night. Sleep well. For me, it's 11.45. I have to, I, you guys have to know that, like, it's, like, so late for so many people. It is not even midnight for me. So, I'm so sorry that, like. And I feel like I'm taking, like, so long talking about this, and, I've, and I'm, I'm also sorry. Um. Hey. Well. Okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta keep going. I gotta keep moving forward. Riku is not only presented as a light in his heart. Um. <laughs> he is... Christ. Yeah. Okay. Alright, okay, okay. <sighs> He's presented as a light in his heart, and it is never addressed throughout the game. This is left open. Okay? We'll put a pin in that. Light- here, I'll even- I'll even- we'll, we'll do this. Sora... Feelings. Riku is light in his heart. Literally. It's not even like Pepe Sylvia. It's just like, here's what the story told me. Um, this video at Gam's request. 
Ah, hold on. I can't. I cannot. <laughs> Um, okay, you use light in his heart. This is also unaddressed. Um, okay, I'm trying to remember what the fuck. Uh, okay. Uh, if you were to even just consider the- just the context, which, like, I had picked up from context, and then it was only further proven true with the Ultimania, that Sora says, uh, may my heart be my guiding key, and he is then led to other worlds via his heart. Um, and his heart <laughs> seems to know a little more than he does, um, given- this whole Riku being the light. Unambiguously. Like, there's just- we can't ignore this, is- is the thing. We can't. Okay, it's not small. It's just- like, just literal. It's like so fucking, like, there's- what the- what the fuck do we do with that? <laughs> what else do you do with that? That's huge! What the fuck?! It's just, he's straight up dived to the heart, and it's like, we've never seen anything like it before. And it's just like, oh yeah, here's this iconic shit that's just, that's literally only ever Riku. It is only ever used with him, it's just Riku, and it's just a light. And it's just like, here it is, and it, and it, and it makes all this fucking little sparkly bullshit noise, and he runs for it. Like, excited, and then he gets pulled away, and his heart, is, it's like, it's a reflection of how he's feeling. It's just actually the truth. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna red note this. Un am fucking ambiguous. Un am ambiguous. Mm hmm. You go. <laughs> oh, it's good. Thank you, Pooh. Yeah, Alright, anyway. Can't be ignored. Really big. Really important. Alright, okay. This is something in his heart that goes unaddressed. There's something there. And then, throughout the entire game, Sora is led through the game to different worlds via his heart which you can gather from context and if you don't believe that that's like literal and what is actually happening the ultimania confirms as such that they say that it says that sora's heart is leading him to worlds to impart the lesson of what it means to protect someone who is precious like, to protect somebody so precious and important to you. Like, that's just it. That's just literal, this is what is happening. He asks, and he's like, hey, heart, what's going on? And his heart's like, well, let's go to fucking, like, Corona and shit, and, like, watch this act of true love and... You know, but then he, like, comes back to life and, like, you know, it's really, like, important. And you're gonna think about this later. And Sora's like, oh, shit. <laughs> but the thing is, do note, um, even when they go to Corona, uh, Goofy and Donald, they ask, they're like, what are we doing here? And Sora's like, beats me. You know, I don't, I don't know. Like, they don't know why they're here. Literally, 
literally he asks his heart where to go, and his heart leads him somewhere. And they even take note of, well, why are we here? What What's the reason we're here? And they're like, we'll figure it out. Because the whole time, he's just trying to regain the power of waking. That's his whole goal, the whole time. And as it turns out, to regain, to regain the power of waking, he's supposed to learn the lesson of protecting somebody who is precious. And, and that's just straight from, like, that's just... Not me. That's not me summarizing. That's that's literally how he's to to regain this <laughs> is learning to learning what it means to protect somebody precious. Um. So we're going through. Uh, I don't know worlds like fucking Arendelle, Frozen. We get direct Riku, like direct ah Riku Elsa parallels, uh, which was also translated in a way that made it so. It seemed, like, a little less gay, but it was... It, they toned this guy- they toned this puppy down just a little bit. Um, because he does directly compare, like, himself with... Yeah, because it was pretty- it was pretty straightforward, right? You're like, holy shit, oh man, and it's just like, Sora saying, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure she knows how much you- you know, I'm sure she knows how much you love her, and then talks about, like, this is- this is, like, the same with Riku. And so you can infer, you're like, oh, okay, so, you know, Riku being the Elsa, and, like, Sora speaking from experience and going, I'm sure she knows how much you love her, is like, yeah, Sora? Do you know- are you, are you saying something, right? Whether you're really thinking that hard about it or not? Um, but he more directly- includes himself in this comparison um he talks about how <laughs> he basically like i'm trying to remember exactly what it was because i don't have it in front of me um but he does talk it's like oh it must be like with riku um and he says basically like it must be because he considers me like like, precious or important, or it must be because he, like, treasures, like, that's why he was, like, pushing me away, because, like, seeing it in Elsa, and it happening to Anna, and he's like, it, this is, like, the same with me and Riku, that must be why he was doing that, right? That, because he just cares so much. Uh, you must really cherish Elsa, Sora, internally. Oh, so that was the meaning behind Elsa's expression, it's the same as when Riku disappeared before. It's surely because he cherishes me that he wouldn't let us be together. Elsa must think the same about Anna. So it was, like, more direct. Also, personally, it's like an <laughs> I hate that anybody who uses this as, like, oh, you're gonna use this sibling thing as like a like validation for your romantic relationship ew if anything that means they're like siblings how about fuck you buddy <laughs> how about like fuck off for a second huh how about you like just fuck it fuck you <laughs> it's so stupid because <laughs> Because literally anything, it's just like a parallel dynamic. But I swear to fucking god, they aren't related! You can't make that comparison! Yeah, okay, yes, they're siblings, I get that. And the whole point of that fucking, the big, the, woo, woo, the big thing about the driving it home, oh, it's, uh, true love, sometimes, you know, you find, you find it in places you don't expect. Sometimes, you know, it could be something else. Sometimes it's familial. You know what? But that doesn't make it any less legitimate. It doesn't make it any worse or any better or anything. There's just options, dude. There's just op options. 
And so you can't take this comparison, which is still literally true love, and they say it verbally with their little mouths in the movie, and they say it in the game. The oh, act of true love thaws a frozen heart. Beautiful. Oh. Ugh. But like, you know, Sora and Riku were brothers. No, they're not! They're literally not! They are not! They are best friends! They've known each other their whole lives! If you're gonna use this one tiny point to go, well, they compared this act of true love, which was a special case anyway. <laughs> well, it just means that it's like a sibling thing. It's like, yeah, oh, it must have mean it meant it was a sibling thing when they compared it with the actual romantic couple as well. Which one takes precedent, I wonder? Is it the one that is, in only its specific case, having to do with family? And, or is it, I don't know, just compared acts of true love and character parallels and Sora and Riku literally aren't fucking related? I ask you, tell me, tell me, which one, which one ousts all of it? It's fucking bullshit, this is what it is. And I hate it. And it's so dumb, and it's so, like, shallow. It's such a shallow, like, defense. It's like, we compare it to this sibling relationship, and it's like, yeah, amongst everything else, big whoop, it doesn't make them related suddenly. Anyway, fuck that dumbass nonsense. Yeah, and then also you can, yeah, the comparison with even then, if you want to go like, oh man, thinking you know one thing, and then comparing it and going somewhere else, and you go, oh shit, I realize I have genuine feelings that I've developed through a real relationship with this person I've spent time with. Wow, Anna thinking she found her true love in such a short amount of time, which is still a really ham-fisted Disney thing they keep drawing attention to to make it seem like, you know, let's poke fun at ourselves. We super know what's going on, and it's, like, really goddamn tiring after a while. But they're like, oh, you can't marry me, you just met. Yeah, you, I don't know, you don't necessarily get into a committed relationship with someone you had a crush on for a bit when you were 14, and then you went into a coma for a year, and then also lived wildly different lives. Come on! What the fuck? <laughs> uh, so, you know, you go, uh, the comparison, oh, you can't marry this guy, oh, and then we go spend time with this other guy, and then, like, they, you know, go through highs and lows together, and have an adventure, and spend time with each other, and then genuinely come to care about each other, and then it's implied, oh my god, uh, huh? the true love and then it was but then it was like a familial thing and it's not that it ever took away that it could be true love between the two of them but it was just a different act and why it's super important because they super care about each other and you can have you know a true love with multiple people in various forms platonically romantically familial anything that's kind of the point of a lot of this is that there are options Anyway, they're not fucking related. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, yeah, you have you have that as well as a parallel of going and thinking you want one thing and then turning around and having a developed relationship with somebody you actually spent time with. AKA Sora to Kairi and then Sora with Riku, his best friend. Ba 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 ba. Oh, yeah. Oh, but you know, actually they're just related though. <laughs> Yeah, they're just, you know, because they, they're characters and the thing they go through is similar to ones who happen to be siblings. But, like, let's just ignore the other shit they were compared to. And, like, let's not talk about that whole, like, Riku is, like, the light in his heart thing. But, like, like we won't talk about that one. No matter how mad people have gotten at the document, which is a handful, an active handful of people, I, I'll say that much, I guess. Um, if people are so up fucking in arms over the whole suggestion that Riku is the light in this one fucking section, 
but good god, they will never talk about, and they will never try to dismantle this whole Riku is the light inside Sora's heart, which is like Okay, well, what does this mean, then? If you're so insistent, it's Kyrie because Sora said so, and he's never been wrong before. He has. He's been very wrong on several different occasions. Yeah, nobody's don't have hearts. Fuck you guys. The whole time has been showing us, yeah, they definitely have hearts. That was supposed to be a part of it. And people who bought into they never have hearts, and they retconned it by giving them hearts and saying they could have hearts, it was provably a concept way before Dream Drop even happened. It's just like, co come on. But, anyway, good lord. <laughs> good, good golly gosh, okay? There's, <laughs> we have this, okay? We have light in the heart. Sora's heart is like, buddy, look, I'll show you, I'll show you what you need. And then he goes to all of these worlds, and these worlds either have acts of true love, self-sacrifice, some- <laughs> mechanically, someone sacrifices self for someone they care about. They care about them more than they do themselves, and thus throw themselves in the way of whatever obstacle is happening, usually resulting in death. And then, because of their act of true love, and the power of true love, the person who has sacrificed themselves are brought back. That's just the mechanic. We are shown more than once. Okay, that's just it. Active true love, caring about somebody more than anything else, which is even how Mickey literally describes Riku's newfound fucking power. <laughs> let's not forget. Okay, let's not forget the actual breakdown of the mechanics of an active true love, which happened later in the Keyblade Graveyard is also exactly how Mickey described it, even if they toned it the fuck down. So, you know, sometimes you care about somebody so much that you have no room for anything like fear or doubt or anxieties or anything. Literally, all it's just to care about this person. And Hercules talks about it. He said nothing else than wanting to protect Meg. I love Meg. Romantically, I want to kiss her. And then Riku says the same thing, and they're like, uh, uh, and they dial that shit, they dial it down. They reach, they reach forward with a little knob, and they squint, and they're like looking at the numbers. They can't read the numbers. And so they just turn it all the way down. <laughs> and just all the way. And then there's nothing. And there's silence, like right now, and how I don't have music playing. And it's bullshit. But even then, they couldn't stop it. We could still hear. We could hear the buzz. Through that speaker, we could hear the gay leaking out because you can't take it away because, this is what I'm saying, it's so integral to his character from the start. The key to understanding the narrative choices of Kingdom Hearts, the direction they're going, and everything that has to... anything, all of the direction, is simply accepting or considering the fact that Riku is gay. That's it. Riku... All of his motivation revolves around Sora and his love for him. And as soon as you accept that, whether you think Sora is going to return those feelings or not, it's just... It's just the truth. <laughs> it's just the only explanation for his character. It is made clear many, many different times. And we go into this goddamn game with Nomura himself talking about how not only do friendships change and dynamics shift, and sometimes you were a great group of friends when you were a bunch of kids and whatever, but things happen. Things change. Maybe you drift apart. Maybe you, something changes with one person, maybe not the other, whatever the fuck. And everybody was like, holy fuck, Riku's gonna die? Riku's gonna leave? Huh? And everyone was terrified. And then guess what happened? Kyrie died! <laughs> Literally! Everybody thought Riku was gonna die, and then Kyrie did. <laughs> anyway, that has nothing. If we go into this game, uh, friendships change. Things are. Things can be different. Sometimes it's not, it doesn't remain the same. This is, this is what Nomura says, and in specifically regards to the Destiny Trio. And then he also follows up with, 
I think in this game, though, even though maybe it's not, like, a realistic game in a realistic setting, I wanted to convey a realistic, like, th their feelings and how they can change. And I think that we'll find out, like, I think this game shows exactly how they all, how they all feel about each other. And even when I read that fucking quote, I was like, holy shit. There's only one thing that could be revealed that we shouldn't, like, otherwise assume or, like, know about. Which is, if we were to, if, if we were to humor the idea that they were genuinely still pushing Sora and Kairi as a thing, uh, what is there to be revealed there? There's nothing to be revealed. There's nothing there. So it's like, there's, there's no rock to be uncovered, if that's supposed to be what it is. So what does that leave us? Please, put the quote up. One thing fans may hope Kingdom Hearts 3 can deliver on is offering a satisfying wrap-up to the friendships that began the franchise. The trio of Sora, Riku, and Kairi. All will obviously feature in the game. Nomura hopes its depiction of their bonds can offer a realistic sense of how friendships evolve and change over time. Kingdom Hearts is not too realistic, but I do want my players to grasp a sense of reality from it as well, Nomura said. Uh, this, this does cut off. Um, for example, I'm sure you had a group of friends when you were younger, and if you put the rest of the quote in, I can finish reading it, but, um... If you were to say, look at all of these signs of, this is how Riku feels about Sora and about nobody else. <laughs> ah, here we go. Uh, I'm sure you had friends. Uh, for example, I'm sure you had friends when you were young. A good group of friends. But as you grow older, things change, and it doesn't always stay the same. I think all I can say is please play to the very end and see what happens. But... I think Kingdom Hearts 3 does depict how each character feels about each other in this new storyline. So consider... <laughs> like, if you were to just take me going, look, here are the, here are the facts. Here are literally the facts in, uh, look, we find out uh, Riku has feelings, and it's kind of a lot less uh, ambiguous in regards to the original script in the JP everything it's a little more straightforward and it's also even more easily linkable to other scenes that are paralleled like uh, Hercules and Meg which is strictly romantic and their constant use of a treasured precious person and the phrase throughout the game and like every single world I'm not kidding they're all the time and even, like, a line that was, like, with, uh, uh, with Woody and Buzz and the whole, uh, they're talking, <sighs> they're talking about, you know, Andy, and I remember even seeing this back then, and, like, with Steam, and, like, both of us going, like, our gay senses are going off and we're pretty sure that this is about Riku. And it, I can't say that it was explicitly about Riku so much as <laughs> it was, um, it just seemed really gay and not just like oh, that's so gay it was just like knowing all of the context and like how he's doing this it just really read as such but when Woody is talking about Andy and it's like yeah you know oh it's, he's like the best friend a toy could have and he, and he misses him and he's like looking at his boot and he's looking at it and stuff and Sora gently puts his hand to his heart and he's like you really care about him and, like, just seeing this, and I was like, God, this really is just giving me a specific feeling, right? Like, I'm just like, hmm, that seems, especially, like, with everything, it just really reads as such. And then even in this case, in, in JP, it was basically just like, it was basically just like, ah, oh, like, you, like, you treasure him, or like, he's He's precious to you. It's like using the exact same word. It's it's more like they use this word, this phrase of like treasured, precious, important person by Setsuna Hito. They use this all throughout the game, constantly. And it's not like there aren't other phrases to talk about how important someone is. 
It is a deliberate, constant use. And even in the Ultimania, as they use... Oh, he's, go he's being led to these worlds to be shown. All of this stuff about protecting somebody precious. Which, the only other example we have talking about this, aside from, you know, all of the worlds and stuff, we just have it literally being told to Riku? <laughs> That's it. And that one is, like, not really ambiguous uh, what his feelings are and who it's about. And so we have this, we have Riku and his feelings to protect the person who matters the most to him. And it's Sora, and then we actually see it happen later. And then we have, what, nothing but Sora being shown how to do this exact thing? Which will lead somewhere, I'll get back there. But it's like, even if I were to just, I'm just rationalizing out exactly what's happening and hashing out what happens in the fucking game, and everything they just give us in the game. We have this, straight from Nomura, talking about, hey, you know what? Sometimes those feelings change, buddy. Sometimes. Sometimes you got a good group of friends, but things change, and they don't always stay the same. And you could just leave it at that. You could just leave it there, and you'd be like, okay, yeah, all right, things change. You know, sometimes you don't, you're not as good friends with people anymore. Okay. But then he has to go on explicitly to be like, ah, oh, yeah, this game does show how each character feels about each other. And so you're like, oh, okay, so you're saying this with purpose, this is deliberate, that we should be aware of the fact <laughs> that we're, we're actually supposed to find out how they feel about each other. So all we get is Sora... Not really doing anyone, not feeling really uncomfortable with this Kyrie thing, and otherwise not really exploring his feelings. More like, here is Sora left kind of neutrally with underlying stuff he's not addressing. Riku is the light in his heart, etc. He's very excited about Riku. Uh, the Gay Blade scene, I'll get to that in a bit, because there's ramifications around this. Uh, and then we get, like, even with just the context, like I said, it's just like, okay, if we're supposed to assume that Sokai is the thing, there's nothing else to be revealed unless it's something that hasn't been explicitly shown or stated, like, some feelings from Riku in regards to anything, anything, whatever it is. This leaves us, like, no options otherwise. And then, what did we get? We actually got purposefully, uh, an expression of, oh, how Riku feels about some things, and how Sora feels not so much about some things, and Kairi seemingly kind of just having a one-sided feelings time going on, and things just kind of not working out. So, regardless of me just explaining that the context leads us to believe this, even before the game came out, Nomura stated that there is an intent in showing exactly this. So, at least take, take that with confidence. <laughs> that not only is it, it's not just, you could read it this way, but you know, I like to, like... <laughs> giving the benefit of the doubt, maybe we're just reading it with confirmation bias. When it's just like... <laughs> what? <laughs> there, is, there is literally word of God intent that this is what he wanted to show. That, that's, that's it. We can just actually just take that at face value. He wanted to show that relationships change. And if you take that wholeheartedly, he has been showing that for the whole series. Remember, consider. Yeah, I th I'm, Kyrie's pretty nifty. I like her. Meets back up after a whole year. Oh, you changed, Kyrie, and things are awkward, and he's not super excited. Like, of course he's excited to see her, but it's like, hmm. I don't know. And she initiates the hug. She's really into it. Sora's like, oh, okay, you know, well, this is my friend. This is my friend Kyrie. Yada, yada, yada. All this stuff, right? And it's it's fine. <laughs> but it's like looking at it, not even through the lens, but as it seems to be the stated intent of, yeah, they were all good friends, and then things changed. 
friendships change. And that's what has been shown since the beginning. Okay? Kyrie isn't the person I remember. It's not her fault. And I don't... I'm not... not it's not like Sora's, like, hurt or upset by it. But it's more just like a kind of a realization that comes to. And then after this point, we see considerably less of her. And in any part that should be important, and if they were trying to convince us that it was ever uh, with romantic intent, they missed it by a large margin the whole time. <laughs> that's, that's just factual. She's just not there the whole time in parts where she could have, and would have been, and isn't. And then we find out, oh, yeah, this is what he wanted when moving forward and doing all this shit. And you're like, oh. Huh, yeah, that does seem to check out. Oh, that does seem kind of consistent, doesn't it? Weird. I feel emotional about it. Okay. So. Anyway. Where was I going? Back on Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> the thing is, I'm all- look, I love to be wild for the goof. And everybody, you know, everybody enjoys it. It's fun. It's funny. I like to make goofy noises, but I'm not really genuinely, like, really, really worked up. <laughs> um. I'm trying to remember where the fuck, what point I was making. Okay, right. Uh, Riku, feelings made clear. Um, Sora hinted, obviously, Heart has something going on. Riku is literally the light. Kairi has been slowly vanishing this whole entire time, and Nomura himself has said that there is an intent to express this. So we got those, right? <laughs> And so we have all of these things, these direct parallels with either true love and things to do with Riku, whether it's made, like, explicit by Sora himself, um, or not, and then otherwise separation with things that are almost directly, constantly paralleled to Kairi. Um, not every single time, but the vast majority of it. There is just, like, just a one-to-one, -one, and it's just ridiculous. Um, and then there's the fucking Pooh Bear thing, and it's literally an example of growing up, things change, and sometimes friendships change too. And then he's also directly paralleled to Kyrie in, like, the most blatant of ways. And it's like, if you take it, again, take it to heart that this was the intent for almost the whole time, then all of those scenes make so they make sense entirely it's just oh yeah he didn't feel the same so the hug was strange oh yeah he didn't feel the same so when he looks visibly uncomfortable in the paupu scene it's because he's uncomfortable because he doesn't know he's not he just knows this isn't what he wants or what he wanted it to be that's it that's it's consistent. It's there and it's treated genuinely over the course of years. Years! So even continuing forward with this, with the rest of this game, everything that Sora's being shown, everything that his heart, <laughs> his heart is teaching him, to gain the power of waking is to learn to protect someone who is precious. And the actual mechanics of getting into the realm of darkness, the literal only way to get in at this point, is to use the power of waking. It's stated directly in the game's glossary that it's just the power of waking. That's the only way you can get in anymore. That's it. And so you finish all of the worlds 
all of the everything that Sora's Sora's heart has been bringing him to. And then you find out Riku's in danger. Oh my god. Okay, well, what the fuck are we gonna do? What does Sora do? He asks his heart. His heart that we know for sure. Canonically. <laughs> is teaching him a lesson. On what it means to protect somebody precious. And so it takes him to Destiny Islands. He finds Ericus's key. And I was like, what does this have to do with the thing? And they, they describe it as a guiding key. So I don't really think... It, it wasn't that the key was integral in actually performing the act so much as it was to help guide him to the answer. Um, just as his heart was doing for him. Just as the rest of it. It doesn't even change the fact that it's like he still uses, literally, unknowingly, the power of waking to get into the realm of darkness. To do expressly one thing. And it's to protect Riku. What, what, what else are we left to glean from that situation? I ask you. Like, just in, in all, just like, devil's advocate, how else are we supposed to take this? Heart is teaching him to protect someone precious. We have direct, in char like, character-stated parallels in these acts of true love. Between Sora and Riku. And literally the last time we do anything in like a- like before anything, the last thing we do before the Keyblade Graveyard, the last time his heart guides him anywhere, it's to protect Riku and then he successfully uses the power of waking, of which the- <laughs> of which the requirements were to protect someone precious, someone you cherish. The exact same- I'm not even at the- I haven't even talked about it. Exactly. Just the fact that, you know, the power that you need to know the whole, you, you know, protecting someone you cherish, the same exact phrasing used everywhere else used with Riku, used with every romantic couple, or even just intense friendship, anything like that, the whole thing his heart was teaching him the whole time, and then he gets to Destiny Islands and shoots the little fucking cave? <laughs> to save Riku? What else is there? What else? That's literally just it. That's all the, the game gave this to us. And we know that Nomura expressed that he had intent to, to show how they felt about each other and how dynamics and friendships change. I'm playing this again because it feels good. So, you have that. And you have, of course, Jumping in, doing all of this stuff, summoning the Gayblade, which is not just like a fun bullshit whatever the fuck. The fact that they can do it, and it is still unaddressed, that this is something that has never been shown for any- nothing. And you can't say that it was just a game mechanic at this point anymore, with dream drop distance, okay? Because before it was like, well, it was never featured in an in-game thing, aside from the fact that he- you literally use it to, like, to finish Young Master Xehanort, and so you're like, okay, well that- <laughs> I sure hope this is important past a game mechanic- yeah, no, it is actually featured in a, a cutscene, in an important scene, this is- you can't ignore it, and there's still no explanation for it. <laughs> so... Sora protects somebody who is incredibly precious to him, if not just the most precious person. The person who, at the very beginning of the game, was shown as the light in his heart, one he was so excited to see, to run towards until he was dragged away by outside forces. So consider all this, and how it's still unaddressed. And then we have the Keyblade Graveyard. And this is where the 
after everything that we they took the whole game to show us this keep in mind we saw pretty much nothing of anybody else except for uh, bits and pieces little glimpses of whatever the hell everybody else is doing right but the whole focus on the game was Sora going through these worlds, Sora being taught this lesson, and ending with more or less Sora having learned the lesson. And then using the power to save Riku. <laughs> and then, so, now that the game has taken 80% of the game to show us this, this is when we get to see anything with Kairi. What are we shown with Kyrie? We're showing discomfort. We're shown discomfort in a scene that we know is not supposed to be read as romantic in the first place. Like, at any kind of confirming romantic anything. That's what we get! <laughs> and then we get the Keyblade Graveyard. And then what do we get with this? We get everybody dying. Uh, and then we get... Riku... Sacrificing himself for Sora... More than once, we're shown this. It's pretty important, I would argue. <laughs> and the more we've looked into it, the more and more, not only unarguably, basically, is Riku the light. There's- I don't know how the fuck else to take it. The only thing that ousts it and convinces people otherwise is Sora stating it, like, just stating it? And just like, oh, Kyrie, that must have been you. And then even then, he has flashbacks to acts of true love. Ones that were explicitly shown to explicitly paralleled with Riku, something that we've already been shown, taught him and gave him the power to protect Riku. And then we see Riku protecting Sora and reinstilling him, reinstilling hope and like confidence, what he needed in that moment. And it actually just enables him to save everyone. And then the more we look at the final world, the more we know pretty straight out that it has pretty much everything to do with Riku. And very little to do with Kyrie. Not to say that Kyrie isn't doing anything. Not to say that, but the final world and Sora's arrival there and what is holding him, clinging to him, refusing to let go. Nice. <laughs> it's that bitch! It's Riku! <laughs> with direct visual everything. Hi, here's the sacrifice. Hi, here's the final world logo. It's one to one, basically. Even the footsteps, the amount of footsteps, are the same! It's not hard to see! I mean, it was because there's so much. There's so fucking much in this game to pick apart. But once you look at them, wow, it feels pretty obvious. <laughs> and considering everything else we saw in this game, everything... Everything I've been telling you this whole time, everything that had to do with Sora, everything that has to do with him learning about something, and then the actual, like, implementation of the- of him using the power. <laughs> Not only just using it, but using it to protect Riku specifically. And then don't even get me started with that fucking scene. The pop, hello, here I am, and Riku's like, and everything's slow. And beautiful droplets everywhere. <laughs> Press a button, mutter your- And it's not romantic. No way! I mutter my best friend's names under my breath all the time when I struggle. You know? Doesn't everybody? Of course. Oh, God, it's so stupid because it's like, why- why do you- <laughs> I mean, we know why. We fucking know why. Why do you feel the need to go goddamn, like, butt-fucking-wild, stretching- breaking your back to prove to anybody? But it's straight. When it's so much easier to just go, maybe it's not! <laughs> maybe- 
maybe Riku's just gay and in love with his best friend. I feel like that's like just easy. You don't even have to admit to some romantic ship, any pairing, nothing. If you just admit this to yourself, wow, you know what? All this shit makes sense. All of it. <laughs> no, that's a good point. Yeah, all right. Yeah, close your eyes. Listen to the- here, let's- Let's do this, shall we? Whoa, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Sanctuary. You're gonna have to give me a fucking second here. <laughs> All right. Uh, test. Testing. One, two, three. Um, close your godforsaken little baby eyes. Listen to this shit. And then imagine yourself vividly saying this about your own best friend. And then, like, how, like, you know, how does that, how does it feel? Do you feel like you say that and in the same way? Here we go. <laughs> Zora. <laughs> Look, I had to close my eyes and see, and it is... <laughs> like, it's just so fucking funny. Hi! <laughs> Hi, how's it going? Um, also, good night, Claude. Good luck packing. I hope they bring your doorknob back. <laughs> but it's literally, like, it's... It's so much. It's so much! Why... Why pull a muscle, like, reaching so hard to pretend that... <laughs> Totally straight, though. Why make yourself work for it so hard? Can't we all just... I don't know. Sometimes it's easy to take... Well, it's, I mean, easy. To take the easy way, way out. Yeah, we are... Uh, no, sometimes it's just nice. Just take the easy way out. <laughs> Unless, of course, you hate gay people. But, like, that's kind of your own problem. Um, that's kind of and it kind of invalidates like literally anything if you can't accept that he has feelings <laughs> you're not gonna understand the choices this series makes so i just <sighs> so here he is using the power of waking to do what to save Riku, someone he cherishes, even in the novels. Oh, even in the novels, does Sora refer to him as his most treasured friend? This wouldn't be a first time. And then, considering everything, again, let's wrap this back around. Let me just a little tasty reminder that Nomura has stated pretty plainly that he went in with intent to express exactly what we dream he would to, I don't know, show that uh, friendships change. Sometimes you just kind of drift apart to whatever happens. And <laughs> we're here to, they're, we're going to find out how they feel about each other. Wink. And all we got was like, bye Kyrie, And then all of this shit. Where else is this going to go? Where else that go, huh? Where's this gonna- where do we- what do we do with this? Wait, wait, huh? It sure as fuck ain't them drifting apart. If the secret movie has anything to say for it, if this was just open-ended bullshit, we're just trying to go on the game, yeah, okay, whatever, okay? Yeah, we could be like, God, I sure fucking hope that the next game is- because that would make sense. That'd be great. But, I don't know. But no, we actually know where they're kind of going. <laughs> we have a closed door Kyrie put her in the box. Put her on the shelf. Bye bye. Here's the next game. Wow, it's about Sora and Riku? You know what? I have a feeling that it's not about them drifting apart. 
Especially with a character that's like literally their fusion. Just, and they make a big ol' fucking point of it. You know, it's not just, hmm, it kind of seems like it. Uh, I've been on DeviantArt, I've seen this kind of thing before. No, 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 no. He is, and they talk about, he, he looks exactly like Riku, uh, but I'm dressed as him, that's weird. Oh, but then, you know... And then, even at least in English, it's like, he looks just like Riku. I gotta play this fucking game someday. But then even in JP, it's like, he looks just like Riku. It's like, I, I feel a strange connection with this character. And then it's like, surprise, bitch! He's a real guy who's important in the real game. Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> He's plot relevant, even. <laughs> Huh, I wonder where this is gonna go. I wonder where all this thematic shit with the red and the blue that's made clear that it's representative of each other. Oh my god, he's got a red eye. Oh my god, he's got a blue eye. Oh, and in the same trailer we see him. Oh my god, there's a red light. Oh, there's a blue light. Oh, and they're looking for each other. Ooh, what's going on? You think that's gonna go nowhere? You think this is gonna be nothing after a clarification? That feelings should be made important, and sometimes you're just friends, but then you grow up and things change? And how all of these feelings, these feelings expressly made clear, are compared to acts of true love? And it's gonna go nowhere? Of course, of course, there's- we're not literally no Nomura. Of course, he could just go- Fuck it, and then, like, nothing happens. There's always that chance. But you don't always have to- You can't give it the same weight as the context we're given. You can't do that to yourself. And you can't do it to everything we're being shown. That same- That same mentality, that same idea of, like, well, and, like, you kind of try to give something the benefit of the doubt, good or bad will oftentimes put good people in bad places. It's okay. It's okay. I'm telling you. One, I said it's okay to cry. And two, it is okay to feel confident in what you think is, is right or your interpretation or anything like that. I see it so often when it comes to even just this or literally a, a debate even political debate, anything. It's giving too much platform to something that you otherwise know isn't possible or isn't good or isn't anything that you feel as if you should be fair. And it's not that you're being unfair. You are given all of these tools. You're given this fucking math problem. And you're like, wow, here's the answer. I'm pretty sure this is what's going to happen. Or, you know, good, bad. I think Soriku Endgame, actually. Uh, I think that <laughs> giving anybody with, like, alt-right leanings the time of day is bad. But you know what? We should be fair. No, you don't always have to be. You do not always have to be. You do not always have to give somebody a foot in the door. I'm just saying this now, and I'm not... Saying that you should put blind faith into a man, into just some dude making a series. I'm just saying that you don't always have to give credit to an idea regardless of how faulty it seems. That's it. You are not obligated to give them a, a footing, basically. It's okay to be like, I just think this is where it's going. That's it. It's just be- yes, exactly. It's the difference between being neutral and seemingly fair and just objectivity. You can't give the possibility of, well, it might not happen, versus everything I am giving you right now and give them the same possibility. That's just bad math, dude. You can't be doing that. <laughs> For your own, like, emotional safety, if you're like, I just don't want to invest so much and be disappointed, Fair. Fair. Balanced. You can do that. That's fine. But it's not 50-50. We're looking- it's- it's- 
if, if you're thinking math, think in probability, okay? Everything we are seeing is a big stupid sign pointing one way down one fucking road. And just because there's even a chance that maybe that there's like that side path, that like that dirt path over there could be there. You know, you, know, you can't see it, but you're like, oh, I mean, there could be a dirt path though. I was like, sure, I guess. But why bother? Even what? Who cares? <laughs> who gives a shit? If it's there, it's there. If we go down it, we go down it. We'll find out then. But is it unreasonable to see all of the fucking signs? This neon sign, this big old billboard, that's like Soriku Endgame ahead. Turn left at, you know, exit really gay. And you're like, ah. But like, but what if it's lying? <laughs> you don't gotta, dude. You don't gotta do that. You can at least be like, well, I have all reason to believe this might just be the thing. And you're fine to do so. That's it. That's it. That's all. You don't always gotta give everything the time of day. It's okay to just take this to yourself. So given everything given literally everything that we've been seeing this whole time. Because it's like, when we have mountains, mountains of evidence pointing one way that not only would make sense, is just woven into the narrative, like, core aspects of why events, key events, have happened through the entire series, over the course of nearly two decades, consistently treated genuinely with care. Nothing has ever been made light. Nothing has ever been little scraps, little, in, in, let's get their attention, guys. Let's get the queer people. Yay! You know, and they fucking put, like, worms on the ground. And we're like, oh, and then we eat it. And we're just like, thank you for worms. I love it. I love worms. And you're like, uh, no, 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 no. It's been perplexingly thorough, which is why it caught me so much. Me specifically, who doesn't, who never really went out of their way to, to ship anybody, to do anything like this. <laughs> to be this involved in a series like I am, to this point, to, to the point where it was just like, I don't know how they could do this for so long, this consistently, and it'd be an accident. Ask yourself what's more likely, that they fucked up every single every single supposed romantic interaction between Sora and Kairi, and then just also accidentally the entire time kept a consistent character for Riku, his motivations, and everything regarding Sora? Whoopsie? The whole years? Come on, what? <laughs> Oops, all gay. All berries, each one of them's a fruit. It's gay! <laughs> So it's just like, what's the probability of, of of that? Just like when I argue the stupid fucking logo that this, this, okay, this is me being actually fucking annoyed just a bit. That's so, ugh, why are you so insistent? And it's like, here's the logo, bitch. Here's the black, pure black, not off black, not gray, black corner. Black! It's dark! It's pure! Oh, there's a gradient! Oh, yeah, and I have eyes, too, just like you. I can see that those aren't the same fucking shades! Not even close! So, so, at five or so years of development, and you're going to believe that every step of the way was a fuck-up, and it was just- and they animate the whole fucking thing, and it's just, here's the dark shit, here it is, but it was an accident. Oops! Again! And again! And again! Oopsie! Oh my god! Oh no! Ha guys! How did we let this shit through? Is that- Is- Is that honestly more believable than they just did it on fucking purpose? Why you gotta stretch so far? Why you gotta reach so hard? Don't you wanna- I don't know, take it easy on yourself? Just like a little bit? Don't you wanna just maybe go like- I don't know- Oh, that's neat. And then call it a day? But you're gonna fucking sit here and just bend over backwards and insist, well, they fucked it up this time and this time and this time and this time and this time because you're giving them too much credit because people are stupid. I couldn't think of this, so nobody could think of this. Ooh, guess what, asshole? 
People think of shit all the time! News flash, ass flash, news hole. People do convoluted, crazy storyline bullshit all the time. Kingdom Hearts, oh, they could never, no ma could never think of bullshit like this. This involved, what, a fucking logo? Oh my god, is that so far out of the way? Here's evidence that he's done it before, you dumbass. Here you go. Like, it's not that hard to believe in the first place. But if you insist, look, he's done it more than once. Here you go. Here you Oh. Oh my god, it just... But nobody's that smart. Well, I mean, I don't see many arguments against, like... Fucking Hideo Kojima and the ludicrous levels of attention to detail he gives, well, gave, past tense now, because fuck Konami, but <laughs> the absolute ridiculous attention to detail, the meticulousness, the convoluted, like, plot, everything he did with Metal Gear Solid, and yet it is praised constantly. I'm sure, and I'm more than sure, that there are people who are like, ah, but, I mean, he must be fucking making shit up along the way. Yeah, I'm sure. That's how storytelling works. Okay, look, we're fucking... We're humans. We're not, like... <laughs> we're not Joshua. We're not omniscient. We're not omnipotent. We're nothing like that. We can't plan everything in advance. Yeah, but again, you're gonna let this tiny fucking minuscule little stupid bullshit outweigh... It's just as equal or powerful to... All of the context pointing that maybe they just planned some of this shit ahead of time. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck off, dude. It's not the same. It's not always the same. Just because there is a chance that maybe they even made something up along the way. Guess what? Everybody does that. Even the best fucking writers in the world are gonna do that shit. Because you write some stuff and you're going with it. And you know what? Sometimes... Sometimes you look back and you're like, oh shit, I didn't plan for this, but this works the fuck out, baby. And you know what? I bet there's a lot of that shit that they didn't plan for that worked out so perfectly that you never would have guessed they didn't plan for it in the first place. But it just turns, just turns out that it just happened to work. It's happening all the time, every day. Stuff is happening so much. And, oh, uh, let me, let me, I, I want to bring this up really quick as well, that the idea that people aren't smart enough to, to pull something like this is so, it's, uh, there's a similar root in, uh, academia and regards to history and things like that, uh, like, uh, Easter Island, for example, you get the big heads, you know, or they're there, and way back, way, way, way back, it's like, how did these get here? What happened? Huh? And the answer they received was that they walked. And they took this, and they're like, that's fucking stupid. You don't know what you're fucking talking about. They can't walk. I will ignore any context that would point to this otherwise. They must have been here since the very beginning forever ago. And it's just like, no, you dumb bastard. You can move them by, like, literally just walking them. You just wrench them back and forth with some big fucking ropes. And they waddle. This is how you move big shit. It- That's it. Like, under- Like, <laughs> Underestimating human ingenuity does us no good. It has been just fucking putting wrenches in the system forever. It's so dumb. Sometimes, sometimes you don't need to take things at face value. Or sometimes, sometimes it's that simple. You know, it's just a matter of context. <laughs> and thinking that nobody could be this smart or figure this shit out ahead of time is just, it's just, it's ignorant as fuck. <laughs> so, we have this, all right? We got the fucking, the logo, you dumb bastard, look at it. Why, how do that shit animated, looked at, moved, dissected, not even just words in front of it. Oopsie boopsie. 
it just fucked it up and we never noticed. We got so used to looking at it for five years. But when you have to animate it and make it look a specific way, I don't know what else, I don't know what to tell you, Phil. <laughs> you can believe what you want and you can do gymnastics and and get fit and look like super cool or look like an idiot in a leotard. I, it's all up to you. But I'm going to like sit my ass down and take the easy way out and say, I'm pretty sure they did that on purpose. And even if you wanted one more point, it's like, here's Nomura, the director. He's also an artist, a man who draws things with his hands and makes artistic decisions. He, with art that you see with your eyes, do you think the guy is so, I don't know, never gonna do stuff? <laughs> like, with that, I don't know, maybe? But like, fuck it, nobody can think of that. Bullshit. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm trying to remember exactly back to where this branched off, and the whole giving Nomura blind credit, you don't always have to give everything a foothold when all of the probability is pointing one direction. And I'm, I'm showing, I'm giving you, I'm handing these things to you on a platter of look where we're probably going because there are no other answers. And not only that, it is not this one time. It is the whole series. It is the entire goddamn series and the supplementary material. The novels, for instance. You know, the things that are so often stated as just non-canon like the second the fucking second you bring up that oh in the novels this happened and it's like they use the novels as proof Blech. Blech. and then they spit on your shoe and then i pull their hair <laughs> and i get on the fucking bus and if you guys weren't here for that story i did that one time to my stepbrother because he spit on me and i pulled his hair back and i very threatening i leaned over his face and i was like don't you ever do that again. And then I let go. And then he just started crying, and he was being a uh, turd anyway, and then all of the kids were on my side when I got on the bus, because everyone was fucking tired of the stupid shit he was pulling. The end. Um. So. <laughs> um. It's not that I'm this passionate about the logo, it's just the dumb fucking metal mentality behind it. Like, the, the, the line of thought, that reasoning is just so like, why? What are you doing? Why bother? How is this like that hard to believe? It's that, it's not the logo so much as it's just, I'm baffled that someone would reach that far to say that it isn't. That's it. So, here we are. Barbecue sauce all over my titties. Um. And here we are. With this shit. Let's, let's take a look, shall we? Let's really absorb this. Oops, wrong. Yeah, bitch! Look at that! Look at that! Go Hold on. Wee! Show me the boy. Oh, I love him. Look at... Oh, beautiful. I'll go back into the novels. That's what I was talking about. I remember now. Look at him. I love this guy. And I love his nose. Fuck. Right? Like, it's so good. And then, you know, like, let's just, like, oh, but it's romantic. Don't worry. Oh, uh, Sora, and he looks, like, uh, constipated when he's dealing with Kairi, but, like, we're gonna go out of our way and show, you know, Sora coming in, and, like, it's all beautiful, and he lands, and no droplets, and then we slow-mo, and, and, and Piku's eyebrows shoot the fuck up into his hairline, and yeah, but, 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 like, uh, but it's, like, not... Gay, or even should be considered in the same ballpark as constipated Sora on a tree, huh? Right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and this isn't even say to to knock on people who think who think uh, that it, I'm not even 
here. I mean, of course, obviously, I'm making an example of uh, people insist this somehow still. But, like, I'm saying this to you <laughs> right now. The attention to detail. It must, if, if you need more, if you need more a proof that even again, within the Ultimania, they say they very, very specifically, particularly paid special attention to body language and those small little movements on the face. You know, nice, sweet little details. They were like, oh, we really tried our best. You know, we really wanted to convey emotions and stuff. And so you're going to tell me that he looks super uncomfortable? And that's like, oopsie, they just don't know how to show romance. Despite everything else, everything else we've seen, and the state statement of intent, and I, the Jet Set Radio song. Oh, and it's good, and I'll, maybe I'll play that after that. All of the context. It's a little hard to write off as a whoopsie doodle. And it's also, it also honestly, okay, sorry, I keep playing and pausing. It also, honestly, like, I feel like paints a huge misunderstanding of how much work goes into making this shit. You don't just sh poop out an animation on accident. You know? <laughs> there's a lot that goes into it. There's time, there's work, there's like everything you have to do, rendering it out, everything. Several iterations. This stuff doesn't just come out in one go. You know, you have to you have to storyboard this shit. You have to plan things out. And you want even more? You want more? I'll give you more. There was even a video. There was even a video where they talked about working with Pixar and all of these things, and that they had learned something very important. That they were like, yeah, you know, because they were working with Pixar very early on. Toy Story. Toy Story World was, like, one of the first things they did. And that they had learned new skills from working with Pixar about how to deliver visuals and their story better. And how to work with line of sight and, like, how you can use that. To, sh to show important things. And, like, uh, they, they specified that, like, ah, uh, line of sight and how you can use it to more easily tell your story. I, I, so, okay, yeah, uh, I don't know, from people who, like, this is their job and they, I don't know, make movies with big emotional impact and how the Kingdom Hearts team very specifically say that they learned more things to even tell and convey things even better visually within their story and that they say oh we paid special extra attention to all of the small the body language the facial movements the animations and then you're gonna go and say Sora looking shocked confused and really uncomfortable well I mean he's just kind of nervous and flustered and and they just did it poorly though you know, disregarding the whole Nomura considered not even having them share one, but he had them do this anyway because it was an important at least I'm going to this is my you know, filling in the blank of showing there's, it's still something important between them, you know, it's still something nice to have with your friend you know, and it's also a closure on one of the few things Kyrie still had so you know, even given that context that has since been made clear, uh, everything else would point to, yeah, you know what? I think all of these faces and emotions and things are really super intentional. Wow! Oh my god! So, t take this. Take this into your heart. That a bunch of people working on this made this shit on purpose. Oh, beautiful baby boy. Here we go. Oh, and he he falls. How did he even get here? Holy shit. Beep. There go the eyebrows. And then look at him. And then... Huh? Duh. Hold on. Take me back. Take me back. Bullshit. This shit. Okay, hold on. Hold on. We're gonna compare and contrast. I made it. Fuck. Come on, go back. There we go. All right, look at this. Look at this big, happy grin. All right, we got teeth. We have 
and and this is just actual this is just actual stuff that is honestly really fascinating uh also yes the sort has been embarrassed and flustered before i was actually just talking about this like earlier that we have actual examples to pull from of him being embarrassed, of him being flustered, of him being bashful. We can see it, and we know that they know how to convey it, and what it looks like on his goddamn face. And so, okay, we while we also have, you know, everything to compare it to, I'm just going to talk about this, and I've talked about it before, but I'm bringing it up because, again, attention to detail. Very, very important. His face, right here, he's happy. You got teeth, big. Right? Big, toothy smile. His big, stupid grin he's always wearing. Thank you, Riku. Um, and you have... The squint with the eyes... Is just a, a natural thing we do when it's like a real, genuine smile. It's a really easy thing you can use to convey, like... Just, just actual body language is the thing. It's like, it's just an actual thing. I've read a lot about it. Um, but there's, there's like, you know, consider you, you give somebody the white guy smile on the street, <laughs> which is going to be relevant here in a second. Um, and it's just kind of like, you know, you're just put slapping a smile on your face at whoever you're passing by and you're just, there it is. But like when you're really like happy, you're laughing, you're anything, your eyes will squint. You get the, you get the little wrinkles, you get the little crinklies around the corners of your eyes, right? You get this and like, okay, see look at this. You have this and where is it? Where is it? Because I was looking at this last night. Okay. This shit drives me wild, okay? I was looking at this shit and it's even for those who argue that it's like, oh, he's nervous at first, and then he has the pout boo. Okay, and then he, he he takes a little off, off that thing, and yeah, he's also incredibly unresponsive. He doesn't really say anything. Kyrie does like all of the talking. Also, personally, as somebody who just. Uh, art storytelling. I also went to college for this kind of thing. I guess if if you need the idea that if you need more qualification and not just it seems like it's not. I don't know. It seems easy to understand that the fact that this whole scene playing is playing only Kyrie's theme, which as a choice makes it a it makes it about her. Um. And you can't say that people don't do this shit on purpose because they do. Oh, they do. Oh, they think about the music, the themes, the anything. Talk to literally or read anything from people who work on soundtracks for anything like that. And there's a lot of thought put into this. And yeah, it is Treasured Memories. Um, or no, isn't it Friends in Your Heart? Isn't it? No, 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 no. That... That has dearly beloved in it and that does not make a single appearance in this fucking scene um <sighs> life no matter what that's all okay wait hold on really quick there's something that drives me fucking wild is that like considering exactly where they were looking at riku just a bit ago let's let him be and he's not convinced Huh? And this was what was preoccupying him. But okay. This, right after this, please, God, look at his eyes. And remember that they said so specifically, we are doing this with intent. We paid a lot of uh, attention to detail when doing this kind of thing. Where does he look back to? <sighs> Wild, right? Crazy. It couldn't be, though. I mean, he's just bashful. He's just nervous. One more time. Just just for those of you in the back who may not have seen. <laughs> he looks off to the side. There's nothing else over there. Why would he be looking that over there? And then he looks to... Yeah, in slow-mo. And it, 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 really, it really lets you see. 
Um, and then he looks at the Paupu, and then he looks back at Kyrie. It's Riku, Paupu, Kyrie. <laughs> and it's just, and, and this is his face, and he's just not Mom's sure. fight will be our toughest yet. Mm-hmm, okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. And they do this, and keep you safe. This is like he he still has to think about this, and he's like, okay, yeah. Kyrie, I'll keep you safe. And this is like he finally smiles here. Mm -mm. Let me keep you safe. But he doesn't keep the smile the whole time. He really does not. His face really like rests back to like this kind of neutral like, hmm. And then we're about to see it. And then he gives just, like, this really general smile. <laughs> Hold on. I was looking at it last night, and he's like, uh... And then he's like, here you go! And he, like, smiles, right? And, like, that's- this is kind of it. And, like, Kyrie really definitely has, like, a different emotional charge going on. Where she, like, sighs. <laughs> Looks at him. <laughs> but, like... Do you say that, and you're like, the Sleeping Realm theory, and they point it out? I was one of the writers, if you were not aware. <laughs> that was- I'm literally the one who wrote- I was like, bite? And then I was like- no bite? That was me <laughs> writing on the picture. So, eh. Um. <laughs> so, yeah, don't worry. I'm wildly aware of that one. Um. Go back to his face. Go back to his white guy smile. He's like, eh. But again, and I bring up the squinty eyes. When you smile, Like, like, let's just, like, let's just, like, okay, I'm glad you that you like it, but, like, let's really fucking look at the difference between the emotions in both of these expressions. Please! And this isn't a fucking stretch! And, yeah, and Kyrie actually just has, like, she's happy. It feels genuine coming from her. I'm not here to say anything bad about her. She has, she's doing, she's... She wants- she wants Sora in her life. She really, really does. But sometimes things change. Sometimes friends drift apart. And it's sad, but it happens. It's very actually a realistic thing that happens. That I don't think honestly is portrayed in anything. At least not like this. <laughs> eh? Here, let's- 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 where the fuck- Let's look at this shit side by side. This is like, look at this. Look, he is so happy, and he's so sweet. And it's like, it's just a full grin. And it reminds me of another time we saw something like this. And it was like, you know, he's talking to Riku. And when he asks what the door to light was, and he's like, you know, always closer than you think. And he taps his chest, and you know, like just, and he gives him such a sweet, sweet smile. And again, and again. Let's not forget that we're seeing all of these shots and it's like strictly perspective and he's seeing this beautiful boy <laughs> that's just so sweet and wonderful um, and just the love of his life. But this is also just, we are so, shown so many shots that it's just Riku just seeing. So anyway, squinty eyes. The actual, and here's the thing, you want to see more? Riku does it too. And he does it constantly. Every time it's something to do with Sora, or like he's like interacting with Sora and stuff, and he gives him a smile, it's always like this actual ass, like, look at him. Look at him. He's so happy. And you can see it. You can see his eyelids. They're there. Oh, he's beautiful. Oh my god. Uh, and it happens again later. We'll let this play the fuck out, because, I mean... <laughs> It would be a crime not to. And what the fuck? I love that fucking shot. <laughs> His goddamn eyebrows just going. He is a stunt. I made it. 
And then, again, another point of, okay, playing a character's theme that it's about them, it's literally Sora coming to the rescue. This makes sense, right? And this is also from, like, Riku's perspective. Sora comes in and saves him, and it makes sense, and then it bleeds into Dearly Beloved. A song very expressly shown to be for the both of them. And then they spit Mickey Mouse out onto the ground like the... <laughs> Like the chewing tobacco he is. <coughs> and don't forget, <laughs> we continue to protect this precious person. Mm. Hmm? They didn't have to show another thing where he did it again, but they sure did. And Riku, baffled, stunned into gay silence once again. And he looks, and when he's, and Sora has to turn, and he gives him a, he gives him a smile. And then, oh, uh, Sora. And, and he's still the whole time. He's just like, the whole ass time, it's squinty, squinty, happy eyes. How, oh, Sora? There you go. I had a little help. Watch over the king. I've got this. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then, of course, here's another fun little whatever the fuck. Okay. Ah, oh, body language. So important. Ooh, ah, oh. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ee ha. Who? Monkey noises. Not Clayton. Uh, he, he, hoo, hoo, ha means n uh, heart. Uh, anyway. Here we go! Alright, if this was only literally to expressly convey giving Aqua a group hug, they could have cut this so much shorter. I talked about this last time. <laughs> they really- there's- Again, I ask you, why would they go through- Why would they show- Why would they go through the trouble to show this to us? Especially when they're like, uh, everything else. Again, uh, remind you, uh, expressed intent to express feelings and how character dynamics shift and change. Oh, uh, let's show and go out of our way. And then you could have just ended it here, but like, let's just keep the shot going. Oh, and we do, oh, oh, you know, duh. But like, you know, it doesn't mean anything shit though but they did it <laughs> okay all right whatever i'd also like to bring up the fact that they even uh presented this before earlier in the game sora's own worry about riku being in the realm of darkness um and how he was worried about him Uh, so, you know, when we get shit like this and Sora's, like, upset. It's not like we can use that big old door anymore. Wow. It's completely how, how do we get in, you guys? Yeah, we closed it after beating Ansem. And we certainly can't ask the king or Riku. Cause you oh, his face when he says Riku. Oh my god, hold on. Whoa, hold on. Hold the phone. Oh, he's so upset. <laughs> Hello? He closed it after beating Ansem. And we certainly... See, he's listening to the whole thing. can't ask the king or Riku. What? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hmm. Oh, interesting. He's just like he's worried, and then he so specifically is like, uh, like it's just. Oh no. Oh boy. Uh oh. <laughs> Whoo. Hold on a second. Let me just. Let me just like. Let me like. Like. 
I just like the hey fucking Sora's face the second and I'm gonna spell it right Jiminy says Ruthie's name you wanna take a loopsie? thanks cool all right message delivered Okay, hold on. Because when he finds out and he's like, because I was going to just go to him being really upset. Yeah. Sora, somebody's calling us on the gummy phone. We got bad news. Oh. Oh. I knew I should have gone. He's so upset. Now we can ask? It's not like we can use that big old door anymore. It's completely gone. Yeah, we closed it after beating Ansem. And we certainly can't ask the king, Riku. Because you wouldn't let me ask. Only King Mickey can open a door to the realm of darkness. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, Gorge. with the whole how we fucking excited he is when Riku calls him. I'd also like to point out that in the trailer, in the trailer, <laughs> when it had Riku and it was just like, oh yeah, you know, we're in the power to protect, you know, what matters or you know what the the whole line that specific thing, and then it immediately cuts to Sora saying Riku's name. Like, it just n without skipping a beat. They just go straight to it. And I was like, interesting scene placement trailer. And then and then it just was true. What's this? What's this? Oh, the basket with the fruit. Oh, it came out so cute. It's got the little ears. Yeah. May my heart be our guiding key. It'll show us the way. Like it has, this whole time. Where's your heart gonna take us, Sora? What's going on, buddy? Where do we go? What's your heart gotta say about this shit, huh? Okay. Oh, and he's so but happy. Where does it lead? Good night. Yeah. Hurry, Sora. Okay. And we're, uh, oh, we're taking to Destiny Islands? Wow. Oh, huh. Well? God. When I. The whole trailer, like, had me crying all Why fucking do you think night. That gate took us here. <laughs> like, the night it was, like, revealed. <laughs> it just kept, like, it just kept smashing into me like a wave crashing against cliff face <laughs> but I was just like everything Riku has worked towards everything he's wanted to protect everything he cares about and in this moment it's being realized and the fact that it zoomed in on his eyes and he was just looking so like unhindered into this light and I was like oh <laughs> and I would just start crying again <laughs> A keyblade? <laughs> what the fuck's this shit do, guys? It and he just does it. How did it end up here? Hmm, maybe it's another guiding key. Wow, guide me, E. Sure, but to guide us where? Beep. 
And then, like, you know, no place fucking important, I guess, just like the cave. Okay. Alright. Christ. Oh my god. Um... Oh, right, the novels. That's where I was going back to. Let me also feed you this wonderful little tidbit. Something to instill even more confidence. If this- all of this hasn't already. I'm gonna play this fucking bombin' ass song, bitch. Yeah, buddy! Look, and I'm looking straight into the camera, and I'm, like, really fucking tired, and I'm like, listen. Listen to me. <laughs> the novels have been going since basically the games <laughs> have been around. And while I would definitely say that there wasn't always intent, maybe a wish, a wish upon a star, maybe a backburner idea, that a backburner idea maybe of some intent, something perhaps to do with romance, maybe not. At least, if anything, Riku's motivations were probably set kind of from the beginning. <laughs> I kind of have no doubt that that was kind of the intent. That it's pretty easy to see that all of his motivations are because of Sora, not necessarily Kairi. Kairi is kind of an excuse he uses while dealing with his frustrations with Sora. Um, but the novels have been around for a long time, and again, <laughs> this has been consistent, uh, incredibly. We're only just now getting them, but they've, you know, been out for a long-ass time. And they are, as it stands, uh, second-tier canon. They're not non-canon, they're just literally, if they conflict with Word of God or something that happens in the games, those parts are not canon. The games and the literally creator take precedent uh, in story delivery. So when you have things like, uh, in the novels, Sora goes to Olympus, or, well, you know, Hercules world generally, for the first time in KH2? Yeah, that's not canon. We can all safely agree. That's not fucking canon, okay? <laughs> it's fine. We're it's fine. We're good. Uh, come back, goofy music. So. So, okay, yeah, anyway. Um, that's not canon, but... It serves as a means for character insight. And that is more or less canon until- that, that's just canon until proven otherwise. And gee whiz, are the novels incredibly consistent. Especially- particularly. Yeah, I, I can- I can loop it. I just keep thinking I'll go somewhere else and then- but then I want to listen to it again. Anyway. I'll loop it. Fuck it. So I don't have to think about it. Anyway, novels just as consistent and have been. It's not. This isn't a recent development. This isn't. They just started making these novels because they decided sometime late game to just take this as the the direction. These have been coming out along with the games, not like you know directly right along with it. But you know, Kingdom Hearts two comes out somewhat after that. The novel comes out. It's a light novel. It doesn't go into everything super in detail, but like I said, it is a means to explore character... Just character motivations, thoughts, things we don't get to see in the game. Yeah, and they're incredibly, just absolutely consistent in regards to Riku's feelings, which are also incredibly consistent within the games themselves, almost as if they may have been planned or kept a certain way the whole time. I don't know if you heard my stomach, but I'm sorry if you did, I guess. But the thing is, going into Riku's thoughts like this, uh, things get a little less ambiguous if they weren't already. Um, 
and it is wild. Like, it is just one of those things where I have, I genuinely ask. I don't know how else to interpret. And I know, and I'm gonna go to that, the scene about <laughs> Axel asking Riku, what is Sora to you? You want, if, let's let's break this down. Why would why do you ask somebody that? Because, well, I mean, you're asking for clarification on what this person is to them. And if we consider what we know, let's count it off. Um, Rika's been doing this for uh, quite a while here, <laughs> say like a year, <laughs> to wake him back up because he cares a lot about his best friend. This is made explicitly clear. There's no room to argue that it's his best friend. I'll read this aloud. You're in a pretty good mood, Axel remarked. Riku glanced up. Seeing Sora just made you that happy, huh? I don't feel like telling you. A little smile crossed Riku's lips as he took another bite. Of his ice cream. They're eating ice cream. Hmm. <laughs> you know, it's creepy when you smile at that guy's face, Axel said dryly, following suit and nibbling on his own ice cream. Silence fell over the room. He paused in his munching to stare hard at Riku. Then, finally asked, What is Sora to you? The question caught Riku off guard. He groped for words. <laughs> Have fun playing Kingdom Hearts 3. The game that gave us way more Soriku than anybody really realized the first go around. <laughs> da -da -da -da. And yeah, also Kairi's coming with us. It did sound very desperate from Riku, but even considering what happens in the novels, where he basically just ditches Kairi in the cave just to find Sora, and, like, that's all he could think about was finding Sora. It was like, Kairi even, like, said shit after he was, like, calling after him, and he was like, I didn't hear anything she said. Like, all that mattered was I was going to find Sora. And then he finds Sora, and then he's like, all that mattered was that he was there at the end of my out- like, at the end of my outstretched hand. She stared at me, looking confused. What about Sora? Right. Because Kairi would only think of Sora. But I was the same way. When Sora and I were together, we could go anywhere. I really believed that. Riku, wait! I ignored her protest and started to run. To get Sora, that's where I was going. Sora! Sora! Hey Sora, we can leave this world right now! <laughs> Yeah, yep, that, yeah, when I told Riku of a way to bring back, it's like, it was just like, he asks him to do shit, and then when it's like, this is how we'll bring back Sora, and he just, he's like, this is, this is it then, and he just goes. <coughs> <coughs> he came worrying about the raft, too. I found him soon. Where's Kairi? I thought she was with you! The first thing he said to me was about her. The door has opened, I told him. Riku? He stopped in his tracks. He was looking at me strangely, too. The door is open, Sora. Now we can go to the outside world. <laughs> Sora was only ever thinking about Kairi, and Kairi was only ever thinking about Sora. But now, that would change. I reached out my hand for him. Come on, Sora, let's go. Riku? He looked just a little bit nervous as he tried to take my hand. I had no idea what was happening around me right then. I never even glanced at it. All I cared about was that Sora was right there, and I was reaching for him. Just a little bit more, and he would make it. Sora. <laughs> okay, but it like it's straight though. Look at this. 
And this is, like, this is the Chain of Memories novel. And like I said, these came out, like, around the games. It might be more based on, like, re-Chain of Memories, very specifically. I do have... That just says Chain of Memories, the novel, so... And it was two parts. It was Riku and... Bruh. Good night, P. Good night. Have a date on it? I'm like looking at my fucking book. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> Regardless, even if this came out with Rechain of Memories, that's still like right around KH2. <laughs> and it's still old. You give me a hard time. Good luck! So this is uh this is the official novel, consider. This is also second tier canon, consider. This is also written by somebody who actually went on to be a scenario writer for the series. <laughs> at least starting in 358. Okay? Alright, at least at least there. <clears throat> because, as Nomura had really kind of put it, was that like uh Tomoko has a wonderful understanding <laughs> of the story and the series. <clears throat> And it's, again, consistent, just like it is in the games. <laughs> oh yeah, there are, like, added, like, hugs in the novels. Like, m multiple. There are... Jesus Christ. Um, he hugs Riku when he's back to normal. Um, before he takes off his blindfold. And, like, while he is holding on to Riku... And staring up into the face he missed so much. Here, I'll even- Here I go. I mean, I bet Steam's probably pulling up the fucking quote, but I have the book right here, so let's just see. They mark it. Bookmark. There we go. <clears throat> Steam did the work for me. Riku. Sora looked up, holding tight to his friend's hand. It's- well, okay, this isn't even- this isn't the one, but, you know. It's Riku. Riku's here. He knew that it was Riku's hand he clasped. It was bigger than the one he'd held a thousand times before. But in his heart, Sora felt it. A knot of something he could barely define swelled in his chest. Clinging to that hand, to Riku's hand, Sora fell to his knee. I was looking for you. Tears spilled over and flowed down his cheeks as he pressed Riku's hand against his face. Well, if I find the hugs first. Uh... The first book. What am I doing? I'm in the wrong fucking place. <clears throat> Da -da. Okay, I'm getting close. Oh, I'm getting close. Damn it. Oh yeah, here's something though. <clears throat> <clears throat> Here, I'll read these aloud for, you know, for posterity. Riku, Sora flung his arms around the other boy, looking up into his face, far up. I know we haven't seen each other for a year, but Riku's so much taller. No fair. Are you going to take that off? Said Sora, tugging at the black cloth over Riku's eyes. 
and, and consider, his arms are wrapped or latched onto him as he's doing this. Riku slowly uh, untied it and winked against the light. Sora let him go and asked, What's that for? Riku lowered his eye, his head. His eyes couldn't lie. Se his eyes couldn't lie, said the king, stepping towards them. Why? Sora pouted at Riku, just you're trying to fool, huh? Uh, myself. <clears throat> myself, he says. Uh, that word from him had a terrible certainty to it. Sora's brows drew together, and he moved closer to his friend again, staring into the face he'd missed so much. Seriously, Riku? Sora grabbed his collar. <laughs> Why were you trying to do so much on your own? You've got friends. You have us. Donald and Goofy nodded. Then King Mickey, and finally Kairi. Seeing all his friends smiling at him, Riku exhaled and leaned over, bringing his face closer to Sora's. What, did you forget? The thing is, Sora, I'm not a total sap like you. <laughs> uh, so, hold on. Just before this... <laughs> uh, just before this scene. Um, when everything blows up, you know, just before he turns into doing all, you know, and he's looking handsome and beautiful. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, okay, the, uh, Kingdom Hearts explodes, and then we have in italic texts that I, yeah, it's Nominee. It's Nominee saying and thinking this, so... The, the light is what we lost. Our hearts and so many other precious, precious things. Wake up, Sora. Hey, Riku, wake up. The things you lost have come back, right? Namine clasped her hands together beneath the shower of light. Are you okay? asked Riku. Yeah, actually, this is kind of fun. Sora grinned as he got up again and readied the Keyblade. Of course, he knew this was a battle for the fate of the worlds, but fighting something big and ferocious with Riku beside him, it brightened his spirits. And knowing that Riku felt the same way made him especially glad. Of course you're enjoying this, Riku remarked. Riku, look out ahead! The dragon had crossed into their path again. Riku fired the glider's own lasers into into its belly. You're up, Sora. At that key, at the queue, Sora sprang up atop the dragon and managed to deal it a blow. Riku! As he jumped back off, Riku was waiting with the glider, as if he already knew exactly where Sora would go. Alright, song. Let's fucking start stop. Play this fucking calm ass H3 esque Soriku song. Enjoy! Uh, Riku was waiting with the glider as if he already knew exactly where Sora would go. This thing is tough, Sora complained. Well, it's our last enemy, right? Riku's lips curled into a confident heart. Fire the lasers, making the dragon flinch. As it lowered its massive head, Sora leaped on and smashed his keyblade into it. The action in these novels aren't fucking fantastic or anything, but... <laughs> The dragon began losing altitude. We got him! Sora jumped back to the glider and threw his arms around Riku's neck. Ack! <laughs> the momentum from Sora's hug knocked Riku into the control stick and the glider spun around. And then he's just like, oops, sorry. And that's, that's the whole thing. Eh, stomach's pop. Oh, here's some more. <clears throat> The hordes of Heartless set upon them in far greater numbers than before. They couldn't afford to stall, instead dashing on to the high point, highest point of the castle. How are there so many? Riku muttered. Sora grinned at him. We can beat him together. And then to himself, his inner thoughts. Sora, and just, right, we'll be okay together. Whatever's waiting for us, we can get through it now that Riku's back. Uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, fucking... Hold on, where's the fucking where Goo Riku feels so anxious when Sora disappears? I gotta find it. Hold on. 
Oh yeah, here's this. <clears throat> when questioned, why do you hate the darkness? We don't hate it, said the king. It's just that darkness is kind of scary, but it's part of everything. All of the worlds are made of light and darkness. You can't have one without the other. It kind of makes you wonder why we're scared of it. As if the question had just occurred to him, he looked down and thought. It's... <clears throat> It's not that we hate the darkness for existing, there's good in it, too. Like the peace of nightfall gently puts us to sleep. And all the stars in the night sky, they need the dark to sparkle and shine. But still, the darkness can be so frightening. It's because of what lurks inside it, Riku replied. Riku knew better than anyone the terror of the dark, and the pain of those corrupted by it. Terrible things lurk in the lurk there in the darkness, evil things. And this is italicized. This is thoughts again. <clears throat> lurk there in the darkness, evil things. Things to lure you in with kind whispers and draw you astray. And then, before you know it, darkness is stealing sweetly into your heart. That's why we fear it. And light cuts through the darkness. Light destroys it. Well, no. Darkness is never destroyed. It remains just at the other side of light, quietly, and it's there to make the light brighter. Light shines even more powerfully because there is darkness in it. While the things that lurk in the dark fear the light, and they'll hide from it. Darkness didn't come first, light came. <clears throat> I think the darkness came into being because of the light. That's the feeling I get when I look at Sora. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Uh, he really did want to see Sora and talk, but that was impossible with his appearance. Things that mattered the most were what he couldn't tell Sora. It had always been that way. Mm. Um, let's see. Where's the? Let me. Let me just. There we go. Okay, so yeah, and the fucking suddenly you fight Xemnas in front of the big skyscraper. <clears throat> well, <laughs> Sora, answer me, Riku called. Sora had vanished along with Xemnas, and neither of them were any, neither of them was anywhere to be found. Where could Xemnas have taken him? Dread sat heavy in his chest, choking him, but Riku kept calling out. Just when we finally found each other, and I was able to turn back into my real self, Sora, you can't leave me now. As Riku started sinking into despair, Sora materialized in the middle of the party, sprawled on the ground as if he'd fallen from somewhere. Sora! So. Ah! Uh, ah! <clears throat> There, there you go. Um, and this is just... Oh yeah, also, um, um b -b -b when uh, Sora falls into anti-form, like the only time they it happens and they draw attention to it, um, <clears throat> uh, let's see, what's happening to me? Falling, falling into darkness. Sora, Goofy called. Sora's form was engulfed in a black substance. He hardly looked like himself anymore, more like a nobody. Um, <clears throat> Sora dropped on all fours and pounced on Xemnas at an incredible speed, attacking ferociously. What's going on? Donald cried, anxiously clutching his wand. Sora, Riku called to the pitch black thing shaped like his friend, the anti-Sora. Hearing his voice, it paused and turned back into Sora, the darkness washing away like a wave receding from the shore. Oh yeah, well, I'll read these aloud as well. Sora turned back to the ocean. Yeah, well, I've got my share of problems too. Like what? Like, wanting to be like you, Sora admitted quietly. I always looked up to him. 
He was only a year older than me, only a little bit taller. But he was better at sword fighting, and he always looked cool, and I practically worshipped him. My best friend, Riku. The truth is, I wanted to be just like him. Wow! Uh, how long had he been searching? How badly had he wanted to see Riku, to talk to him again? And Riku was here. Here at last, I found you. Finally, I missed you. I've missed you for so long. Uh, and, um, uh, ba ba was it? I swear to god, I just had, like, a pit of thing. Oh, right. Uh, let's see here. And this is all, by the way, this is only, like, the KH2 novel. And there's stuff in, like, other novels. I mean, we had some stuff from the Chain of Memories, but, like... Like, I'm looking at one book, and most of everything Steam's been putting in? One book. <laughs> Yeah, there's, like, no introspection from Sora about Kairi. And when he looks at the Paoku drawing in the cave, no thoughts. He just runs straight to Riku on the tree. Yeah, uh, here's this as well. Um, We did it, Sora hopped up in triumph. Donald and Goofy grinned at him. Gosh, fellas, you did great, said the king. But Riku began to distance himself as everyone celebrated. Riku? Sora turned to him un turned to him uncertainly, then approached him. There was a sadness in the set of Riku's shoulders. It made Sora worry. You're coming back with us, right? I'm corrupted, Riku said without even hesitating. I gave in to the darkness. He couldn't help but feel it was wrong for him to return to their pristine islands. How could he show his face to everyone when he'd helped destroy their precious home? The Destiny Islands. He'd seen it in dreams so many times, and yet, he had a hard time believing that it would truly be right for him to be in that picture. Three of them on their island again, laughing together. Riku! Sora shouted after him, objecting to all the doubts in his head. And then, to himself. Maybe Riku doesn't want to go home, Sora thought. But I don't want to go home without him. We promised Kairi. I want to run down the beach together again. There's so many things I wanted to do with him. Also a cute detail. Um, having achieved the goal of cheering him up, Sora gave him a smug grin. Actually, Sora lost his sword fights against Riku all the time, but he'd never lost a staring contest. Oops, treacherous life. Take light. Oh yeah, as he fell into thought, Riku stepped closer and placed his placed a hand over Sora's heart. Roxas. Huh? Sora covered Riku's hand with his own. Here. He means Roxas is here? Right here. Yep, yep. He had never imagined that just being with Riku, fighting alongside him, would give him so much strength. He'd hoped and wished that he would be able to reunite with Riku and have him as an ally, and yet he hadn't expected that desire to come true. Riku didn't look like himself now, but it didn't matter. Sora was so glad to be near him again. Let's go! A little bashful for some reason. He broke into a run. So, anyway, the novels. Again. Second tier canon. Consistent. Genuine. And also in line with everything we know from the games. In regards to what we could assume uh, in Riku's entire character and his motivations are about. And even Sora's distancing from Kairi. They, he, nothing. There's nothing, none of his thoughts, none of anything 
like notably, there's nothing radio silence entirely in regards to Kyrie in Zora's own thoughts, but we sure get to find out a lot about how he feels about Riku all the time. So consider, if you will, this isn't necessarily proof to Riku Endgame. Actually, this is just extra. Everything I showed you from the games is enough and is proof of Soriku Endgame, actually, in regards to- Look, it's completely, actually, just genuine and legitimate to consider that it's actually going that direction. Um, with everything they've given us, it's hard to think it wouldn't, to be honest. Of course you can leave room for doubt, but when I when I said Soriku Endgame actually, that fateful day I changed my name to that, there's a reason I put actually. <laughs> it's very genuine on my part of like, uh, holy shit, just actually. So, I say that, I say it with feeling. <laughs> it's- it's really just... Let's... Then... Come on, Sai. Come on. Come on. There we go. It's consistent. It's genuine. <laughs> I did uh, put uh, a, t a little, like, trademark, a little TM on my name. <laughs> so, um, yes, uh, sincere. There we go. And actually, plot driving. And also, uh, stated with intent. Uh, damn it. I can't not play this song. I'm sorry I've kept you up, but it's been a good fucking romp this whole time. That's a whole- you can see, you can see what time it is for me right here, right down here. <laughs> 1.55. I don't go to bed for like another hour or so, so. Good night. Good night, Steam. Thank you for joining me. I'm actually gonna... Let's see, I'm gonna see if I can write this shit down a little bit. Make this smaller. Make a little sticky side here. Yep. Mm. 
Oh, um, let's also consider... Gotta think for a second here. Um... So, using the power of waking to wake somebody up, actually, which we see Sora do with Ventus. And he just kind of goes and he just kind of does it, you know? But let's remember that in Dream Drop, um, literally, Riku had to answer a bunch of questions, which all of the canonical answers are... <laughs> um, about how much he cares about Sora. Just actually. <laughs> Just hentai <-type> movies. <laughs> I hope everyone who is watching this retroactively, I hope this has made you feel better. It may have been long-winded. It may have been me just kind of yelling about shit. I hope it was at least entertaining. Um... Sure, at least that much. Um. But I did start this, and I, with the very genuine intent, I take all your little baby hands and in, in my big warm ones, and I go, It's okay to hope. It's okay to cry. And sometimes, you know, it's okay. To just take what you know and run with it. You ain't gotta give credit to every possible, like, thing. You can take the context and go. Um, I do bring this up. I'm just curious. Obviously, I've done- and I'm sure there's, like, stuff I could keep talking about, I guess. Because, God, I'm sure I could go on forever. But! I know that, obviously, it can be hard, especially when there are people who are so actively out there doubting or casting doubt. And- Believe me, believe me, I know the feeling when somebody is casting doubt on something and you go to- and you're like, God, maybe I'm just convincing myself. Um, I- that feeling sucks, one. Because it doesn't matter how fucking confident you are. But look- look to me, trying times. I'm here for you. <laughs> um, but no, I would say, um... One thing, there are a few things I'm more confident in than, honestly, this. Because, gee whiz, if anything has been proven to me personally, with my experience and yeah, all of this, I feel like I have a pretty strong grasp on this stupid story and the characters. <laughs> what with everything after the dock? Nothing has proven us wrong yet. In fact, things keep leaning into it. And, like, I'm just sitting here like, please, when can we be wrong so we can learn something? <laughs> please, God. <laughs> but even then, we found some shit, and I'm just like, I think we're just kind of mostly right about a lot of everything that I will be updating. That I've been writing about. That I'm absolutely 100% shocked nobody else has found. It wasn't me that found it. It was Gemma, very specifically, but good lord. You'll see. But there are a few things I'm more confident in than, um, Riku's the light. Riku is in love. And he would do absolutely the fucking anything. I don't think that, uh, I don't think anybody's doubting that. That he would do literally anything for Zora, but um, well, I mean, the Ultimania has been like fully translated, and it has done nothing but ooh, ow! <laughs> I don't know why I said ow. That didn't hurt. Ah, fuck. <laughs> anyway, 
Oh, all it did was, like, bolster the theory. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and confirmed things we already understood to be true. Like, we were like, well, it could be nothing but this, right? And then it was like, it's that! Good job, guys! And we were like, <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> we did it! It was exactly as we understood it to be. So, if anything, uh, I guess a bit of a confidence booster. But we're going to find more shit out. Um, regardless, I would say, I have questions of if there are any, like, actual doubts people are, are holding. Like, is there a specific anything that you're like, yeah, but, but what does this mean? You know, what does this mean in regards to this? But, like, why would they do this? Or why would they do X, Y, or Z? And because, boy howdy, am I happy to discuss it. But oftentimes, a lot of these concerns that have, that have been brought up to me are usually, like, a, a focus in on a small detail without regarding the context. Can you really not hear this very much at all? It is light by sleeping at last. I can do this. Yes, no open doors for Kyrie, unfortunately. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. I mean, I know all of this stuff. What you're about to bring up, I know. Regardless, there's like, there is nothing for her to personally, like, there's nothing, like, she got, she ain't got nothing. <laughs> yeah, no, just Kyrie has the following. Fucking nothing. <laughs> Unfortunately. That's just how it be, dude. We didn't do that. They did that. And they've been doing that for years. Oh, right. Statement of... Statement of intent. I gotta go play. I gotta play. I gotta play it. Because Nora had a statement of intent. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. uh. uh, 
yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, there are, there's more than one scenario is the thing. Remain confident that even if one of them was about saving Kyrie, which is fine, um, there's, mo there's more than one. But I'm not. Statement. Statement of intent. There we go. I like this one. No, that just means, like, it's on, and then when it's, like, flashing, it's... Yeah. Otherwise, I would have been going for a very, very, very long time, and people somehow hearing me. <laughs> what? I would have been going for a very, very, very long oh, time. It's been yeah, this way, like, the whole time, so... Huh? Uh, yeah. There was a big, big goose. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh. Here we go. So, like, me and my friend Ollie were talking about Chain of Memories and Replicu, and we're like, Imagine if Riku could just hear the shit Replicu was saying, yeah. <laughs> because, like, he's worked so hard to keep his feelings pushed down and hidden, and then what if he just heard his bitch go, You're always trying to worm your way into my heart. <laughs> yeah. Now, Replicu's the perfect example of being front-loaded with, like, like, 15 years of feelings <laughs> with no idea how to handle them. <laughs> With, like, none of the experience in actually dealing with them. Sweet, 
Uh. Acting. Uh. Person. Wired reading. Or I'm not the same size. Tune in. Turn on. Teaching the lesson of protecting some of precious. Oh. Protecting precious person required reading to gain power of waking. Power of baking to enter realm of darkness. Doesn't tune in, turn on, drop, drop, no, much about love. I'm probably going to quit here, uh, soon. Back to the boss. 
back to Hoppy Paula. Ooh, good time. Okay, let's see. Um, and this is just gauge three. Uh, Riku is light. In his heart, literally, and is unaddressed, and is unambiguous. We know for a fact his heart is guiding him. And we also know for a fact that his heart is teaching him the lesson of protecting someone precious. And that we know that protecting a precious person is a required reading to regain the power of waking. And then we first see him use the power of waking, enter the realm of darkness, to protect Riku. Uh, and that he doesn't know much about love! Good night, good night. Thank you. Is Ooh. Yay. Um, he is gay. And that's all you need, baby! <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. It honestly has been such a fun time just yelling about stuff. I love streaming. I love just going off. Uh, the first part did come out. I've seen bits and pieces, little translations here and there. Um, there was a comment I do enjoy. That, uh, it does have the part where Sora does first talk to them on the phone. Uh, Mickey and Riku. And it does say, like, it, it just, offhand, it's just like... <laughs> that Sora was, like, like, relieved to see Riku's face. It's not like he was, like, in danger or anything. It was just, like, he just wanted to call and ask a question. And it was just, like, relieved to see his face. You know, Sora continued. And then... And that, that's it. It was just there. Uh, we don't have a date. Oh, so sweet. So cute. Oh. Watch this shit. Mmm. God, I just want to see it again. And we're gonna see it again. 
this just let's again one more time let's just recap let's just recap on all of all of this not even i'm not even gonna like talk about it i'm just saying that uh everything that i have told you how everything is consistent how everything is as we know stated with intent that Nomura intended to show these things that we could already pick up from context, but no, for sure, is actually the case. That he is doing this on purpose. And that you can see it. And that it is what we think it is. <laughs> and then consider that moving forward, it's just these two and it would be something, it would be different if it was just like, and, and Kairi was out there. And then Sora went, but then like Riku went, at, went in after him to help him or anything. But it's like, Kairi's safe. And Nomura has also just straight stated that after Sora vanishes, uh, that after he fades, it's like, he, he goes here, basically. That's it. He, this is where he goes. Bye-bye. So, we know that chronologically this is next. It has nothing to do with Kyrie. <laughs> um, and that it's about them, and not even just them, but them immediately looking for each other. And also involved is some character that is somehow a part of both of them. And then everything else, everything on you, I've given it's a motivational speech. It's hard not to be hopeful for the future. It's kind of hard to think it would literally go any other direction. Other than this. Like, look, look at this shit. Here are their respective colors, and then you get a literal drop. And, whoop, there it is. A drop. <laughs> As they're both affected. <sighs> and he looks up, and there's the Riku light. And there he is. Here Sora is in his color. This is him. His color. And there's also always, and I always I always say this every time, but it's interesting because uh, Riku is in, like, a pretty neutral lighting. Everything's cool, but, like, where Sora is, like, lit on one side really hard with, like, bright colors. And warm, bright colors. Yellows, oranges, reds. Stuff like that. Um, he's always backlit. Always backlit with uh blue there's always some kind of different other reflection there's a secondary like underlighting going on always in all of Sora's shots basically uh even here and even like just just before this i noticed it was like on his pants too back here up front over here it's always a blue and then see we'll while we get cool colors there's no like warm backlighting but also if you here's another thing here's another fun thing uh you see the street light there's basically in every shot in like every shot their colors are like in each other's backgrounds or less um So there are like, it's like, oftentimes it's like stoplights. Obviously we're getting like boots and stuff here. And then also, okay, I'm going to keep talking. I'm just here. We're here now. Okay. This is important. All right. I'm bringing this point. So one, we, s the difference that we see also, which is interesting, um, take it as you will, is the fact that we see Sora getting up off the ground, but we're looking down, right? We have to, like, we're getting up off of the ground. And we're all wet and sticky. So we see him getting up, and then with Riku, we see him rising. He is going upwards in the shot. He is rising up into this, this light. Into this white-ass light. 
So, let's see, we get red lights in the background. My god, where is Sora? What is this? See, ag again, here he is. A beautiful boy. And then Sora, again, always backlit with the cool color. Always backlit, always splashed with the cool color. And he looks- okay, here's the blue that's inside the car. Um, also, you can take as you want. Um, Riku sees a clear- a clear shot of a light. Straight- it's straightforward. Here is just the light. It's even, like, you know, focused. It's fine. It's good. Sora looks and he gets this really, like, ob like obscure light. Like, it's not direct. It's- it's splashing off of stuff, but he's not seeing it directly. Because, I mean, considering somebody who very much knows what they're about and their feelings, and somebody who might not! Ugh. And again, always. Always there's the, the blue lighting. Look, there's the, uh, like, light in the background. Look at the blue. It's the cool tone. There's always, like, there in the shot. Put me back. God, he's so beautiful. Fuck. God damn it. I keep trying to just pause it and I keep. Oh, you're gonna do that shit, huh? Come on. Come on. Come on, buddy. Here he is again. He's light right there. Boop, 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 boop. And the thing is, it's like, once you see it, and you're like, oh, that's just really- it really stands the fuck out, huh? <laughs> like, it's very just, whoop, right there. And then he's looking up, and it's red up here. Again, here he is, the, the bright, warm lighting, and then the splash of the cool, always. And Riku, again, it's a white light, and it's coming from above somewhere. And then here we are. Here we are, good old Yosora. And even then, he's having cool lighting over here, and then the red lighting flashing on and off. Where like the cool is like consistent and whatever. And still, it's not even like so much like a blue as it is like a, the, the white, you know? Oh, there's also the music that's playing, how it's like, somnus, sleep, and then it bleeds into Dearly Beloved. <laughs> so like, you know. So, you think, moving forward, I don't know, they might continue to be... What was it they said? Focused on their relationship because the entire series is about Sora and Riku, their relationship, and how they grow up, and how Nomura has stated, tried to actually make it clear, how each of the characters feels about each other, and that he went in showing that intentionally, while also noting that sometimes you have a good group of friends. Sometimes things change when you grow. So. I think it's really only, only reasonable. Oh, he's so beautiful. Oh my god, I love him. 
Beautiful baby boy. Beautiful baby boy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, god damn. Beautiful baby boy. Yeah, and I've done this as a joke, but there is still something to be said that the transition to Riku does go straight to Sora's crown. But then also, hilariously, it comes out of Riku's pants. So, like, I don't know what- you take that as you want. <laughs> you can just take that however you goddamn want. Beautiful They say have courage, and I'm trying to. I'm right out here for you. Just let me in. We only have each other. It's just you and me. What are we gonna do? Do you want to build a snowman? I shouldn't have upset her the way I did. Elsa ran away because she was frightened. I have to bring her home. I'm sure she knows how much you love her. And I think maybe that's why she looks so sad. It's just like when Riku disappeared. He thought he had to push me away to protect me. Maybe... Elsa's the same. If anyone can help her, it's you. Huh? <sighs> Thanks. Hey guys, I need oh. some help. Oh, <sighs> wonderful. Also, please consider. This wasn't a world added out of popularity. Um... Nomura had stated in an interview that he had seen stuff, concepts, and story things from Frozen before it came out. And he was like, this is perfect. I need to use this. I need it. And then he also had said in the interview that he was like, I sure hope, I sure hope this movie does well. <laughs> well, it certainly did <laughs> but it was not it was not out of obligation or popularity it wasn't even out when he had like decided to put it in so consider that he saw this parallel before we knew anything of it because fans obviously have been drawing this Elsa Riku parallel for years um but he had uh seen this and he was just like I need it I hope this movie does well because I'm using it the fuck anyway and then he did so it must have been important <laughs> cause like consider in the grand scheme of things uh if it wasn't important that 
he needed Sora to reflect on Riku's feelings? Like, why, why? Why would you if that wasn't, I don't know, important? Not that you couldn't explore, like, character feelings, but, like, in the grand scheme of things, I feel like if, <laughs> truly, their relationship, which we know for a fact from their own mouths, that it is the importance of this. And like the the main point that Sora, Riku, their relationship and growing up is <laughs> what the series is about. Um, even if that wasn't the case, and say it was Sora and Kairi, yada yada, why bring this up? And why make an entire world about it, but like not bring closure? Honestly, like, why would you bring this up and not have him, like, if if it was not supposed to be important, why drag it out? Why drag it to an entirely new game to just do nothing? To just be like, I'm glad we talked about our feelings that are also going, that go nowhere. We're friends, and it's, I'm glad we could do this. When they're already at that point, it's not like, you know, some big, super long thing. Finally, finally, they can bring their friendship back together. They're already there. They even had an entire game where all they did was just fucking yak about how great they think the other person is. You know? It, particularly from Riku's end. Um, but Sora did not shy away from it when given the chance. <laughs> We've already done these story beats. So, <laughs> why wouldn't, like, what else do they have left to delve into? Why would they bring this up and not just simply close it as it stands? And go, you know, I think I understand why you acted the way you did, or blah blah blah. But the entire world entire this whole world right here is about them and their relationship and fucking Sora sorting through his like feelings about it that's why he's so worried about Elsa to start because she says things that are like so super way too akin to Riku and like his ice his self-imposed isolation because he was ashamed of himself and he didn't want Sora to see And it's like, it's not like, oopsie. No, he brings it up directly, himself, in-game. That's not word of God, nothing. No, they took the time to do this. In the game! <laughs> what? But it's not like, in the end, he's like, and now I understand. Riku. And I don't have any, there's nothing, no, they haven't talked. since like, the realm of darkness. They haven't had to sit down anything. Nothing. And yet we have a game moving forward and all they have are all of these, like, they have just a table, like, covered in shit that they just haven't addressed. Like, it's so huge. This table's so big. It's covered in so much shit. And now they're just gonna have to work through it like a full course meal. <laughs> So, again, a lot of this isn't just, see, look, look, it's definitely super canon, you guys. It's, it would almost just be ridiculous to assume otherwise at this point. I cannot, honest to God, think of a reason why they would do all, pretty much all of this for it to not go this way. And while it's hard to believe, simply, like, even with everything pointing down the old town road, <laughs> it, because there has been no example of this prior, 
I understand that obviously it's really that that like that's the biggest shadow of doubt is that like we've had other things that felt like they were like a really good setup, but they haven't been like a twenty year long run where it's literally like so interwoven to the plot that you you it can't go ignored, you know? It's like everything with Riku specifically and no more his own words in that he wanted to explore this specifically the biggest cast of doubt at this point is that we're not there yet we're literally just not we're not in a place where you know we've had an example like this before of something this big going this hard <laughs> huh no And so it's just hard to believe it would happen, but literally, if there's anybody who has the clout and the weight to throw around to pull something off like this, I think it's, I think it's this guy. <laughs> I think it's Nomura, you know, the man who held the series hostage if he didn't get Toy Story. <laughs> like... He gets his way, you know? Um, and yeah, on honestly, if... And I, I say if, so you know my feelings, obviously. But, like, for it, for it to happen would be huge. It would be absolutely, like, incredibly huge, is the thing. Because it's not just, like, hey, we, we, have, a, we have a gay character in our game that we sort of imply and then acknowledge, uh, you know, outside of the core material. You know. You know. No. No, it's been, like, going this whole time. And, as I said before, really treated absolutely genuinely the whole time. And... It's, it's just, well, I don't know. I mean, have you fucking seen that guy? <laughs> he wears, like, rhinestone pants and, like, wild other bullshit. You think he's, like, regular straight Japanese dude? <laughs> like, it's just... <gasps> look at him. <laughs> look at him. I mean, regardless of his sexuality, which we, I don't know. That's his, that's fine. Right here to that doesn't really define you could be a straight person and be like, I don't know, make good gay shit. Awesome. I'm just saying to, to chalk it up to be like he's a straight man who has no idea about anything. It's like, well, I wouldn't say that about him of all people, but <laughs> And also to the idea because I, I've seen this touted around. The idea that he would be pressured into this by us, it loud, vocal, toxic, or you know, all of us, the ones who tell you it's okay to cry, <laughs> uh, that he would buckle, that he would buckle to pressure in the first place, but like to listen to us, <laughs> like. Dude, the, if the man runs on spite, if this shit is happening, it's because he was bent on it happening from a very early stage. I mean, who knows? He might. I mean, I have ADD. <laughs> eh. And I mean, I certainly, I do get off topic a lot. But that's also just... Who knows? Uh, regardless. Mm, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 I understand. With, like, the leaving a bunch of stuff open, addressing stuff, like, thing. Because I get that, too. Uh, I think he actually said something about it, how, like, he kind of has this, like, long, overarching idea, and then he'll just be like, this part, I want to do this part, this is, 
you know. And he'll kind of, like, link it in, but he kind of has, like, something he can pull from at any point and just elaborate on that when he feels like it. So. Makes sense to me. And then, God, the whole, like, direct bullshit with, like, Let It Go and, like, all of the- here, we're gonna watch it. We're gonna watch Goofy. Okay, come on! Here we go. You just get to deal with this. Bum, 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 bum. Oh shit, it's quiet. Because he- they can't play the fucking song! <laughs> Ah, give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> uh, eh. Nice. Here we go. I mean, you guys should be able to hear it now. Unless it won't let me play on stream. That would be wild that it's like that active. <laughs> Such a big goofy, because it's like, fuck, dude, it's like in the video game. <laughs> it's such a Riku song, it's oh god. <laughs> Nomura saw this shit, and he was like, I have to. And then I have to directly compare it to Riku. So what the fuck does this mean, huh? It's like, not only does this, like, fit, it also just reinforces that, like, a lot of our understanding as, a, as fans is consistent even with Nomura's own choices. is in the past the break of dawn <laughs> Stop. Stop. 
yeah, it's like it's kind of like ridiculous how <laughs> nice. Love it. <laughs> There's also like the note of Sora they post. He talks about how he's like, oh, like I feel like I understand so much more now. Like after hearing her song. And you're like, oh. Anyway, um what does she say? I'm saying? Oh, that's when she's going up the bridge. Hold on. They sure do have Sora, huh? Interesting. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I have to send it to my confidant. Skella. Also, I just love it. I'm gonna be real. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Stay, it's just so, like, direct. And if, like, okay, look, you gotta consider as well that, and even in Dream Drop, and this is a particular scene, that considering, considering everything, and considering, I don't know, as it stands, as it stands, that Riku just like has feeling, right? For uh this boy down here just off screen. Um But Dream Drop when he is at uh when he's talking to Esmeralda hunchback Dom there hanging out and you know, he has a lot of talks with, like, Quasi about being uh, true to, like, his heart. And, you know, that he's building his own walls around his heart, etc. And then he's like, I wish I could take my own advice. And there are several things pointing out, even in the novels, like we were talking about earlier, that, you know, except for the most important stuff, I've, you know, it's always been that way. Like, he can't tell Sora about something really important. Um, and... In Dream Drop itself, and even in the Dream Drop novel, which we are getting officially in October, uh, happy birthday to me, but there are fan translations you can read. And in Monstro, when he is asked if he has a conscious, a person, a good person, tell him what's right from wrong, and, you know, yada yada, and, you know, he thinks to himself, and he's just like, yeah, I do. He's the best teacher I could ever, I could ever have, you know. The, st the stupid grin he's always wearing. It's like, dude, he fucking says that. <laughs> Riku, <laughs> come on. Who are you fooling? It's no well, you're fooling like a puppet that doesn't know how to be a person and a talking cricket. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how much of, like, an accomplishment that is, but, like, I guess you're making- you're squeaking by, buddy! You know? So, you have that, but in the novel, in the novel very specifically, uh, he's like, yeah, I do. 
stuff and that stupid grin he's always wearing, blah, blah, blah. But then he thinks to himself when he's like, not that I can talk to Sora about everything, though. You know, like, I can't, um, like, there are some things I just can't talk to him about. And it's, that's just how it's been. Um, and so it's just like, we have a couple different instances of Niku keeping something to himself. Something he very specifically cannot talk to Sora about. Something very much important or important to him. Um, in Punchback, when he's talking to Esmeralda, and there's talk, like, Quasi is talking to him, and, you know, all of his heart and stuff that, you know, that Riku said, and Riku clenches his fist, and then he says that he was speaking from personal experience uh, of keeping things locked inside, and it's important to consider, again, context, scale this back out for just a moment. Um, Esmeralda continues to be like, or well, Phoebus, I'd say you still lot locked inside. <laughs> and Esmeralda is just like, you know, sometimes we just have to keep things away from the world at large, just so we have enough time to figure them out. And it really, just generally, the scene really super reads as like, Being about being in the closet. <laughs> um, but again, uh, like I said, scaling out, considering the context, uh, what do we have? Riku uh, struggled with darkness. Cool. Uh, Riku is still working work past that darkness, but he's pretty vocal about it, actually. St he says it outright to young Master Zane or later, you know. He's just like, everything you do, it's like, it's always like, other pe you make other people's problems and stuff. And he's like, that might be true, but, you know, I'm, I make, that, that, that's going to be different now. Like, he's, he's working to do this, and he's really confident about it. You know, he's fine with and open talking about the darkness he's facing. That's not a secret. But we haven't actually, as an audience, been shown anything else. That could be a secret still. Like, it's easy to assume that it'd be like, oh, you keep you feelings darkness locked away. I get it. But no, 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 no. Like, he, he never shows any hesitance, like, talking about it ever. But there are, like, several, several, like, instances of he's keeping things to himself and him he doesn't talk to Sora about it. <laughs> and now moving forward, it's just, oh. So he, he does have feelings, and Nomura wanted to depict this. That we should know exactly how they all feel about each other. This isn't a stretch. <laughs> that was intended. <laughs> and it reads clear as day to me and anybody else, for the most part. <laughs> Really, really insistent with your horse blinders, which are less horse blinders and more a blindfold at this point. So, there's that, even, uh, just the rest of the series, him flying, even actually explicitly, not just that we can read Garner from his actions and things he does, but even, like, actual in-universe acknowledgement that there's something he's keeping inside that he will not tell anybody. And it's something true to his heart. So, not to mention <laughs> that when he says he's speaking from personal experience and he was helping Quasi with this following his heart, and when he very knowingly asks Quasi if he followed his heart, um, which is like, he doesn't have to answer, it's just like right there, you know? Um, but he, he he's there, and it's just like, yeah, Quasi 
did you follow your heart as he's there, like, holding Esmeralda, who he's, like, romantically interested in? Yeah, it's not that late for me. It just turned 3 a.m. <laughs> um, but no, you're you're not me. It's just that's always who I see. <laughs> that's that's what I tend to see is the thing. Um, so yeah. Anyway, <laughs> asks like obvious question to like quasi having pursued what was inside his heart, <laughs> and there he is with Esmeralda. Did you follow your heart, Quasi? And he's like, hmm. <laughs> and then Riki's like, I get it. Me too. <laughs> Just like, alright. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Christ. Ah. Uh. Anyway, so it just like this song obviously about keeping stuff inside and then letting it go. Especially being compared to Riku now, I think would be goofy to simply compare it to Riku dealing with his own darkness. That's all. Obviously often it's not uncommon to draw this song to a uh, coming out parallel. Like, it's really not, like, it's, you know, we're just finally just letting loose or letting go. <sighs> you know, everything. I'm proud to be me and who I am, and I don't care. <laughs> I also love that. Because <laughs> uh, he is. He is the light. Uh, the light. Uh, boogie, woogie, woogie. Anyway, I'm I'm gonna with this all in mind and realizing how really actually way, way more apt these lyrics are than first realized. We're gonna watch this again. After already like super acting like Riku and all of this. It's so specific. Like this storm It's not like he was concealing darkness so much. Like, we're past that. And he fell to it, and then took it to himself. Goofy's the perceptive one, is the thing. I mean, this obviously, that's a pretty easy comparison to just his actual use of darkness. That's fine. Not saying it has to strictly, but I'd say it's more than just a parallel to Riku and his darkness. That's all. Be cry, be my stand, and give me
Okay. I'll end it after this. All right. 3 a.m. I have streamed for nearly 10 hours. I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> and thanks for coming to my TED talk about a Soriku endgame, actually. Um. And I say that genuinely with feeling. Just, dude, it's a Riku endgame, actually. <laughs> so, uh. Good point. Anyway. And we all nod and we all mutter. Uh, uh. <laughs> um, good night or good morning or whatever, anything. It's been good. It's <laughs> night, goodbye. <laughs>